This is the Northampton Board of Health um, meeting, and today is December 28th. It is 5.30. Um, we will start with um, public comment, and I would ask everyone to uh, limit your comments to two minutes. Um, Suzanne, are you up for being timer? Yeah, I have to go get my, my phone. I'll be right back. Okay. Um, and um, I hope we're able to get to everyone. Um, we have a large group tonight. Um, I um, will just give Suzanne a minute to come back. Um, so I know there are um, a number of people here with concerns about a number of items on our agenda. I wanna make sure everybody knows that this agenda has been posted um, since last Thursday. A number of these items on the agenda today were discussed at our last board meeting. Um, our goal is to be completely transparent um, and we believe that we are and um, everything is, um, got it, um, public. Um, so we will start off and this is not gonna be so easy to see everyone. Um, so if you would like to speak at public comment, again, uh, I ask you to keep your comments to two minutes and Suzanne, one of our members will be timing you. Um, if you could raise your electronic hand that is in the reactions button, that is the easiest way for me to see you. And we'll do that. And if then there are more people who are physically waving at me, we'll see if we can find them. Uh, we'll start with, Patrick, and then Chris. Patrick, I'm gonna unmute you. If you could say your name and where you're from. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Hi, my name is Patrick Bowen. I live at 9 Harewood Street in Florence. Um, I sent my comment via email earlier as well. Um, wanted to talk tonight about their potential for an emergency declaration um, and ask the board to not do that as part of maintaining the transparency and democracy that having these meetings in public represent. But I generally wanna talk about the singular focus on one type of health and that I feel like generally the Board of Health has become the Board of COVID. And the, I understand that the trick of COVID restrictions versus the actual disease is why hospitalization or death from the actual disease hits a small percentage of the population in a post-vaccine world, the impacts of uh, restrictions hit 100% of the population. And now that we're 21 months into this, I think we need to talk about what those impacts are in more detail. Um, one, one example is that the Northampton Couples Counseling Center is the largest practice in, in our community for relationship counseling. And there are so many relationships and marriages in trouble that they've actually closed their waiting list, which means there's more than six months of work of people waiting to get help. And in addition, now they're dropping health insurance coverage because the demand is so high, they don't need to provide that as part of incentive to go there. So when we talk about risk of, to kids of COVID, um, I ask that we consider the greater harms of families splitting that might not in normal times. And that when we talk about things like impacts on bars and restaurants, um, that these are places that it, where people of all walks of life can still meet and talk and connect with each other. I don't know how many bad days as a parent have been saved by a trip to friendlies or the roost or elsewhere. And that we're all better for having these meeting places that even in pre-pandemic times, we we're becoming more segregated and isolated. And COVID related restrictions have intensified that. And I fear that granting emergency powers impl implicitly puts capacity limits and other restrictions on, on bars and restaurants under consideration. It's time. Thank you so much. We appreciate your comments. Thank you. Um, Chris Tor Lucas. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Hi. Uh, my name is Chris Tor Lucas. I, I recently moved to Northampton uh, earlier in this year with my now wife. Um, and we are pretty, we have been pretty uncomfortable since we moved with trying to dine in and going to places like uh, the previous commenter mentioned, like the Roost or Friendlies, 
um, because we haven't had something uh, like what is being proposed or is either proposed or is definitely going to happen um, with mandatory vac vaccination uh, card checking at the doors of these places. And I think this policy is going to make us more comfortable with doing that and is going to have uh, all of the positive effects that come with being able to do this again without feeling like we are endangering our uh, elderly family members and friends uh, that we do feel like, or yeah, we do feel like because those rules are not in place. Um, I wanted, I know that this kind of thing can bring out like really, really uh, high emotional feelings from people, which is what the replies on the Facebook of, uh, announcement um, suggested was happening here. But I consider this a positive thing in like a medium small way. Uh, and I feel like those kind of voices are often not heard in this context. So I wanted to speak. That's all I got. Thank you so much. Uh, James Body. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is James Body. I'm a Northampton resident with my young family. I'm vaccinated and I made that choice for myself. I have friends and family members who, for health reasons, cannot be vaccinated. I respect their right to bodily autonomy and to choose what medical interventions uh, are right for them, and so should we all. I'm adamantly opposed to a vaccine mandate, and there are two arguments I'd like to make. One is about our values as a community, and the second is about effectiveness. I'll start with effectiveness. It's acknowledged by the CDC that being vaccinated does not prevent infection or transmission. Quoting from the CDC website, De December 20th update, CDC expects that anyone with Omicron infection can spread the virus to others, even if they are vaccinated or don't have symptoms. It's very clear that Omicron has made breakthrough infections substantially more common. Does anyone on this call not know someone who is vaccinated and boosted who, has, uh, who have now has COVID? Simply put, a vaccine mandate will not prevent the spread of the virus. It will not have the effect that its proponents seek. If you think otherwise, you need to look again at the data. Now for the values-based argument. My family made a choice to move to Northampton and raise our family here, in large part because of the city's reputation for tolerance. We believe that people here had respect for different viewpoints, had respect for difference. These last nearly two years have shown that reputation to be more and more hollow. The reality is there is a small but significant proportion of Northampton residents who for various reasons have chosen not to be or cannot be vaccinated. They may be a minority, but I thought this was a town that respected minority rights. To go ahead with the mandate will be to give the green light to segregation in all but name. We need to ask ourselves, what kind of town do we want Northampton to be? Are we really willing to exclude a significant minority of the population of this city and of neighboring areas from town life? We would do well to remember that a vaccine mandate will have a particularly severe impact on historically marginalized groups and on kids. It's time. In summary, a vaccine mandate won't prevent the spread of the virus and it will exclude many people from participating in town life. Thank you Thank so you. much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we're going to have Joe Capino, someone whose screen just says name, and then Rose Bookbinder. Joe? Uh, thank you. I'll try to talk fast. I thought I had a little more time, but um, I have to admit that I was a bit disheartened when I saw the, the potential for Northampton to pass this legislation. Uh, we've seen this trend in some areas of the country, uh, and it's always under the notion that it's for safety purposes. Uh, you know, we were told that um, uh, upon receiving vaccination that it would prevent us from getting or spreading the virus from people like our president, Dr. Fauci and Dr. Walensky. Um, and we've learned that that is an incorrect narrative as we see Omicron breakthrough cases in people who have either been fully vaccinated or boosted. Uh, I work in healthcare and have personally seen my coworkers who are either boosted or have double uh, vaccination status come down with COVID in recent weeks. Uh, and even the immunologist Ugar Sahin, who worked on the BioNTech vaccine that we use, that three doses is not a guarantee to stop the spread of COVID. Um, and since we know this, I ask why is this rule being implemented? 
New York City, which is some of the strictest mandates in the country, including ones brought up for consideration in Northampton, one of the top cities in rising COVID cases. After the initial mandate, restaurateurs were asked how that, uh, the mandates affected their business, with 75% citing a negative impact, 50% stating things were significantly worse for them, and 75% reported staffing issues. We've seen businesses shut down, and it seems like a poor decision to further limit who businesses are allowed to interact with. If a shop decides that they personally wish to limit who may enter their establishment, that would be their choice, but to make it a mandatory requirement for participation in social life feels like a bit of a power grab. Do as we say, or you are not allowed here, despite what the science actually says. One thing that has come up on discussion boards or in conversations is people like these mandates because they think that they'll keep hospitalizations low. There's fear that hospitals are overrun with COVID and they'll either shut down or not allow people who have real emergency issues to be seen. There was a recent article uh, written by Dr. Jonathan Rothwell, which reported that America's estimate of COVID-19 hospitalization risk was actually uh, vastly wrong uh, and generally incorrect. Um, some people who were typically associated with the Democratic side, which typically is pe people in Northampton, uh, believe that there was a 50% chance or greater uh, that one would need to go to the hospital if they tested positive. The study actually showed that at its worst, the likelihood of hospitalization was around 1.6% and often less than a single time depending upon vaccination status. I understand that there's been a lot of fear here, uh, and I understand that people are genuinely concerned by things. Uh, but I would like to echo that for a city that fights hard against discrimination and likes to boast how inclusive they are, this feels like a step in the wrong direction. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, someone who screen says name, could you say who you are, please? Hi, uh, Jay Vinsky, Jackson Street. Um, first, as already said, as already has been said, you know the vaccines are have low efficacy, efficacy against the Omicron variant. Only about 33% for Pfizer. Um, they don't prevent infection or spread. Infected individuals carry as much viral load as an unvaccinated. Um, recently just announced 44% of new COVID cases are in vaccinated people. Uh, so the current vaccine is not the solution. Not that I'm and not that I'm advocating this, but it seemed like a rapid test at the door would be much more effective in achieving this supposed public health goal. And why no acknowledgement of those who have far superior natural immunity from a prior infection? Second, people of color, minorities, and lower income households have markedly lower vaccination rates for any number of reasons. And this mandate can easily be seen and manifested as racist, elitist, and discriminatory. I don't think that's a message Northampton wants to embrace. Remember, there's still no fully approved vaccine available for children. Will this mandate affect their sports venues like basketball at the Y or soccer at all sport. Finally, and most obviously, this is a place places an undue burden on our struggling small businesses, who I assume will be required to act as agents of the board in enforcing this, not to mention potential loss of customers. Now, nothing's wrong with an individual business like the dirty truth choosing to only serve the vaccinated class. Good for them. That's their prerogative though I feel no desire to frequent places where I have to show my papers. It should not be the role of this board with its myopic view to dictate such a sweeping policy. If this is such a good idea, let it be adopted as an ordinance from the citizen representatives on the city council, not by decree of an unelected board or worse yet, its staff. This is not supposed to be how a democratic government functions. We can't live under a de facto state of emergency forever. By now, people are well aware of COVID protocol protective measures and risks. Look, Northampton is not Boston or New York City. We don't need to keep up with the Joneses and knee-jerk reactions without any local critical thinking. This mandate is illogical, not supported by science. It will accomplish nothing but divisiveness and ill will. Thank you. Rose? Hi, uh, my name is Rose Buckbrinder. I First, just want to say thank you to all of you who sit on this board for all of your work um, over these last couple of years. I'm sure it's been tremendously stressful and just want to say thank you for all of the uh, mitigation tools that you've provided to our community through testing and vaccinations. I um, proudly just a couple of weeks ago brought my five and eight year old to the um, testing facility and they're fully vaccinated and I can't tell you how much um, relief that brought me during this holiday season. So thank you. Um, and I'm here to speak in favor of the recommendation. Um, and I'm one of 375 people 
who signed a petition um, in Northampton to support this um, support this act that you're you're thinking about um, putting forward. And I believe that um, as someone who has been a restaurant worker in town for many years, that this is supporting frontline workers. This is making it so that the roost and individual restaurants don't have to, you know, take that risk upon themselves to do it alone, but to actually create a systemic solution um, in the immediate moment. Um, I actually work with a lot of nurses and right now national guards are being toured into Bay State Franklin, Bay State Noble, Berkshire Health, because as we know, the surge is coming and we already were experiencing tremendous staffing crisis. And whatever mitigation tools that we can take in our community to try to um, lessen that impact is huge. And you know, I know that there's a lot of um, anti folks coming out, but I know that there's many, many more that are supporting this. And I know that just in my community of friends, probably 30 or 40 to 50 people who haven't gone out to restaurants because we've feared of the impact on the frontline workers, on our families. And I, I went to New York recently where there was the vaccine mandate and the, the restaurants were far busier than I had seen them previous to the mandate. So um, I think that this is good for our community, good for the businesses and good for our healthcare and frontline workers. And thank you for taking this, um, having this need emergency meeting tonight. Thank you. Emily, you're on. Hi, thank you. My name is Emily Webster and I'm a resident homeowner and parent of two young children in Northampton. I urge the board not to approve vaccine mandates for listed venues. I am disheartened to find myself living in a community where such a measure would even be considered. We moved here five years ago because we wanted to live and raise our children in a town where open-mindedness and tolerance for all were among the most revered and cherished values. This is the antithesis. This measure will have a disproportionate negative impact on certain segments of our community. Children five and older will be required to show vaccine records. Children 16 and up will be required to vac be vaccinated and boosted. My eight-year-old and my soon-to-be five-year-old will be shut out of restaurants, the YMCA, and other venues in town. I watched the Verback hearing when they made the recommendation to make the vaccine available to five to 11-year-olds, and what they said was not what was reported in the news the next day, that it was safe and effective. In fact, Dr. Cody Meisner, the chief epidemiologist at Tufts, and I quote, I am just worried that if we say yes, the states are going to mandate this for children. And I do not agree with that. And I think that would be an error at this time until we get more safety data. Further latest data shows that the risk of myocarditis in males under 40 is higher from the second dose of vaccine than from COVID infection and significantly higher with the third dose of vaccine than with COVID infection. Next, with racial minorities, one need only look at the data about vaccine rates in the greater Northampton area to know that this will have a disparate impact on racial minorities. Thirdly, there are no accommodations for people with health exemptions. And lastly, there is a minority of people who have made the choice not to vaccinate for myriad reasons. And there are people who were fully vaccinated at two doses with the expectation that they did their part and would be able to continue to participate in society. No matter the reason, this measure is discriminatory. We know the vaccine doesn't stop transmission or infection. As such, it is not supporting frontline workers. And right now, the only people I know who are infected are fully vaccinated and vaxxed and boosted adults. Hi. Therefore, this is purely punitive and coercive, nothing more. And we've seen it fail in New York City and many cities around the world. And this at the detriment of the values I've always thought our community would uphold and at the very possible demise of many of our beloved businesses here in town. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Michelle. Hi, thank you so much for allowing us the opportunity to be here and comment. Um, I'm here as an employee, a patron, and a clinician, um, and I'm here to oppose the vaccine mandate. Um, I feel uh, yeah, I feel like it's discriminatory and unnecessary. Massachusetts is one of the most highly vaccinated states in the nation. Um, and I feel the vaccine mandate is targeting a small minority population. Um, as previous people have um, 
Also mentioned the CDC itself confirms that both vaccinated and unvaccinated infected individuals have the same levels of um, viral concentration in the nasopharynx and have the capacity to spread infection. Um, and as we're finding as the variants are changing and data is emerging that the definition um, of fully vaccinated is changing because we're seeing that the vaccines are waning. Um, and that the boosters are still not holding. Israel is considering fourth boosters. They're experiencing high rates. Um, and sorry, I'm a little nervous. Um, I just feel that this isn't really what's going to be protecting us. Um, I feel that it does end up becoming discriminatory. It becomes, um, it's not honoring the legal rights that Massachusetts has sworn for people who hold religious um, protections, um, as well as people who have medical reasons um, for not getting the vaccines. It's not taking into consideration the number of vaccine injuries. Um, and I feel like it's going to have a social as well as economic impact. Um, I feel like it's going to negatively affect businesses. Massachusetts is one of the top 10 most moved out of states in 2020. Um, we are, it's surpassed by California, New York, and Connecticut. They're states that are ahead of us, a couple steps ahead in mandating um, and taking away residents' freedoms. Um, I feel like that's gonna have an impact on um, financially as well. It's time. Thank you. Thank you. Jordana? Hi there, my name is Jordana Starr. I live on Gothic Street and I am a business owner in town. Um, one thing is I've lived in Western Massachusetts my whole life and I remember many years ago, Northampton was the very first city in Massachusetts that decided to impose a smoking ban inside restaurants and bars. And everyone came out in the woodwork screaming and yelling, this is gonna affect us, this is gonna hurt us. Everyone's gonna go elsewhere, blah, 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 blah. Well, guess what, none of that happened and in fact, all the other cities eventually followed suit and soon Massachusetts became completely smoke free. Um, all the people who came out of the woodwork were indeed wrong. Um, and I think that's what's happening again here. The problem is, is Northampton, instead of being the leader this time has chosen to wait. And while we have seen other places take on the leadership role, Northampton has been sort of waiting and not doing so. And so it's been up to the businesses then to make the decision to do the right thing and to impose vaccine mandates. And because we do not have the support of our community, we do not have the support of the government for this, we end up getting hate mail, we end up getting phone calls, Dirty Truth, The Roost, um, even Blue Heron over in Sunderland, they've been getting death threats. Uh, they've been called Nazis, all sorts of horrible things because they do not have the support of their local government to do what is right during a global pandemic. Um, I'm not going to argue with the anti-vaxxers about the science. You're the health department. You know the science. You're educated on this. I don't need to educate you. You probably know far more than I do about this. And that's one thing is, is I'm going to trust the fact that the health department is going to make the right decision. Um, you know, we have tried to use logic. We have tried to use emotion to convince people to get vaccinated. And at this point, we need to have a better incentive to get people to be vaccinated. Otherwise, this is never going to end. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, next I see we'll do Colin, Sarah at spare time, Justin Goldberg, and then Josh. Uh, Colin? Can you hear me? <clears throat> yes. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone, for being here. My name's Colin Ward. I'm a professional musician, and I run the website guitarreality.com, and I'm a local guitar teacher and performer here in Western Mass. What I'm going to say is this. Want versus need. We don't need concerts right now. We want them. We don't need to eat indoors at restaurants right now. We want to. These business owners need to survive physically, not financially. They want to survive financially, and I don't blame them. There are solutions in place for that kind of capitalistic survival in a global pandemic. There's government assistance, and there's the internet. Crowdfunding, live streaming shows, 
you name it, it can likely be helped via the internet. We just have to get creative. Public health is way more important than the profit of a few local businesses, excuse me, than a few local business owners that will refuse these public health measures on the table. The answer has been there the entire time, yet we are approaching year three of daily mayhem. If you feel skeptical about these potential solutions to save your business, I think you should be. It's a pandemic, it's crazy time, and nothing is normal about what we're dealing with, going through, and how some of us are acting. Please listen to public health experts and not me, a musician. The amount of rising deaths in clogged hospital systems and exhausting healthcare workers on a daily basis needs to stop. Thank you. Thank you. Sarah, it's spare time. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Oh, okay. Uh, my name is Sarah Blaze. I'm the general manager at Spare Time Northampton. I've been working here for over eight years. Our business has been in town since 1964. Um, I want to save some time and just say that the vaccine mandate is unethical. Um, it doesn't speak to what Northampton is all about. It also is not going to do anything but hurt the town and our businesses, because as we know, if you are vaccinated, you can still get COVID. Myself and the business owners here understand what the cost of doing business means. Taking on cost of being open during the pandemic, sir, has been a struggle to all of us. My business was closed for four months with a minimum total loss of 350,000. And since July, we've spent a minimum of 700, this past July, we have spent a minimum of $700 on masks. Another cost we expect to rise soon. It's not just my business, it, is, it belongs to my employees too who have been uh, busting their butts. They have been um, assaulted physically and verbally due to the mask mandate, which we do support. Um, we have some of a, the strictest policies concerning responsible service of alcohol. We have a great relationship with Northampton PD and we consider ourselves to be the good kids in town. My team goes above and beyond every day ensuring the safety of our guests and other teammates. From the start of the pandemic, enforcing mask mandates, sanitizing every surface, every keypad, every seat, and every bowling ball. To paint a picture of this spare time team, while well, I've been in the center eight years, the majority of the team has been here longer than 10, 12, and even 20 years. And I assure you, it's for more than just a paycheck. This, the assault that my team gets here, and I know everybody in town's been dealing with it, is only going to get way worse with a vaccine mandate. All of us business owners have been faced with staff shortages, shortages that cause us to close our doors at times, ultimately costing us more in revenue while trying to police and uphold mandates. My question is, what has the city of Northampton done for us or even the Board of Health when it comes down to enforcing these policies, which we stand by you with, um, for our teams, the support from them, from the Board of Health has been uh, non-existent. We've all just paid our licensing fees for the year. My business alone has spent almost $20,000 on property tax this year. We've spent more money on policing the mask mandates with absolutely no support from the city or any concern for the businesses that keep Northampton alive. Thank you very much. Thank you. Justin Goldberg. Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you for listening and giving me your time. Um, I'm here to uh, oppose the vaccine mandate. Um, I will not be shopping in Northampton if uh, this passes. Um, and uh, frankly, uh, a month ago, you all had a meeting about um, uh, vaccine mandates uh, in uh, an old folks home. And, you know, I, I spoke out in favor of it. And you know what? I regret that. I think that was a huge mistake. Uh, where are you guys willing to stop? Where, where, is the, where does this end? What are you willing to do? Are you willing to put people in camps? Because frankly, I think that's where this is heading. And I think you need to ask yourself, are you really willing to let this drag on in that direction? Uh, seriously, this is scary. Um, I, I hope you guys make the right decision. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Josh? Oops, one second. Josh. 
Uh, yes. Hello. My name is Josh McPherson. Um, I own a food truck in the area. Um, I'm opposing these mandates um, for the vaccine for businesses. Um, I was shut down for four months when COVID first started. Um, I followed all the rules, did everything I could to help out. But I just think at this point, it's gotten too ridiculous. I mean, we're going two years now. Um, I'm, I'm for a free market. And I just think the health department mandating me to uh, have to you know, check people's vaccines. And they, you're basically just limiting my customer base and basically financially hurting me. Um, I recently went to a trip to Florida. I was in Key West and I saw how businesses were operating down there and it was, you know, no mask mandates. Everybody was close. Everything was very packedly tight in. I'm not to say that's the healthiest thing, but the, the economic boom you were seeing was just, it, it's something that I was really envious of coming from the situation I've been dealing with for the past two years. Um, Again, right now, they are recommending two vaccines and a booster to be considered fully vaccinated. My question is, um, in two years, am, am I going to have to get the, the fifth booster and the sixth booster um, to be considered fully vaccinated? I don't agree with the government um, mandating what I put in my body. Um, I don't think that should be decided by you. I think that if a business wants to limit their customer base to people who are vaccinated. That's totally within their right. But uh, the government is to work for us, not to uh, limit us. So thank you. Thank you. Um, next, we'll hear from Vulcan, then CJ, then Jay Moses, then Laura Kuna. Vulcan. Hi, how are you tonight? Um, thanks for having this meeting. I have a letter. Uh, that was written uh, by uh, uh, Jeremiah, a uh, lot of business sports that I want to read uh, tonight. Um, uh, first and foremost, we would like to thank you for your service to the community and your capacity as a member of Board of Health. It has been a tough couple of years for a local community, and your efforts are greatly appreciated. It has been brought to our attention that the board is considering instituting vaccine passports for certain businesses in Northampton due to the latest rise in cases. Uh, we respectfully would like you to consider the adverse effects of this action on the business you deem as high risk. Uh, since we were allowed to resume business last year, we have been mandated to build plexi uh, plexiglass barriers, maintain social distancing, uh, reduce capacity, and require our guests and employees to wear masks and more. We spend countless hours cleaning tables and chairs after each use, only to be told that you cannot get virus from hard surfaces. Uh, now we are considering a vaccine requirement to enter our businesses. That will put a tremendous burden on already reduced and overworked staff. This will require personnel at each entry point to check cards and possibly even increase security personnel. Um, also, we would need time to try and hire additional staff and come up with procedures uh, for these checkpoints and actions. Um, I mean, bottom line, it will be a logistical nightmare. Uh, your actions will lead to an increased intention from customers who, for whatever reason, do not want to comply. This has been widely reported to be happening in other cities where vaccines mandates have been implemented, with some cases result in even violence. The fact that Northampton would require a vaccine passport and surrounding towns will not um, will put the very business you seek to protect at a distinct disadvantage. Uh, only, but only if you see fit to proceed with this action, would you at least consider an end date to your actions so that we can play uh, accordingly. We think that the restaurants have been unfairly singled out, uh, but please uh, consider requiring, uh, reconsider, reconsider requiring a vaccine passport, allow us to continue to help uh, Northampton City that we love. This is from uh, Union Station, Tunnel Bar, Scaletto, Mama, Mama Iguanas, Molinos, Bishop's Lounge, Fitzwillis, Highbro, Packers, Northampton Country Club, Joe's Cafe, JJ Tavern, Sylvester's, Roberto's, Hotel Northampton, and Fairfield. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, CJ. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Hi. Hi, my name's Chris. I've been coming to Northampton for over 20 years to various businesses. Um, I've had many great experiences at several of the local restaurants and places of entertainment. Um, I've always thought Northampton uh, was a cornerstone of many important movements, and it's uh, considered a very progressive and forward-thinking city where many people 
from different diversities, beliefs, and backgrounds have always been welcome to engage with one another, learn about different cultures, promote uh, um, diversification and multiculturalism. Uh, sadly, I think as time has ticked away that this has left, uh, been left by the wayside and a mandate such as the one that's in question would only further exacerbate this issue. As a customer and friend of many people who run businesses in the city, <clears throat> I've seen the toll that COVID has taken on many of its workers and their businesses, some of which their lifeline is not only finances, but also the happiness that it brings in providing and giving back to the community that they love. Many of these were shut down early in the pandemic and either never recovered or just were barely able to scrape by. Uh, I've witnessed many um, hours put in by many employees uh, that were able to provide excellent service and a safe and enjoyable environment for our customers and their guests. Many of these people have had to deal with hardships from customers um, with the mask mandate. While the masks have helped to stop the spread, it's also created many altercations with uh, employees firsthand with them being ver verbally and physically assaulted, having things thrown at them. And I think it creates a huge issue and bears um, the burden falls on the uh, employer. And I think that they end up being the ones that are fined and this can't happen. As someone who works in healthcare um, and and knows about the many different policies at hospitals that allow for exemptions uh, for various reasons, medical or religious. Um, if approved, they must follow certain protocols. Uh, according to the CDC, isolation period is now five days for asymptomatic. Healthcare workers, on the other hand, who have received all the recommended COVID vaccine doses, including boosters, do not need a quarantine at home following high um, exposure risks. As a healthcare worker, I'd like to know an explanation as to why uh, healthcare can work while being fully exposed, but then they are not allowed to just go out to dinner and enjoy a night out with their family. Uh, lastly, I just want to end with, I'm asking the Board of Health to not consider a vaccine proof mandate in order to enter businesses as the city prides itself in diversity and describes itself as a non-discriminatory and anti-prejudice with zero tolerance for hate. It is doing just the opposite by placing a mandate on businesses. As a supporting city of LGBTQ and BLM, and one that promotes positivity and acceptance for gender identity and beliefs. Would you rather be associated and remembered as a city that showed it tolerated discrimination against a certain group of people for their vaccination status and beliefs, or would you rather be remembered as a city who worked together to unite rather than segregate? And I'm gonna end with this quote. Um, we must learn to either live together as brothers or perish together as fools. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Jay Moses. Joanne, I appreciate the opportunity to speak tonight and... Um, Can you identify yourself, please? I, I, are you hearing me? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I am an independent theoretical physicist. Uh, physicist. Uh, I have developed a number of different models independently of any particular formal education. I do have a couple of degrees, but not related. And I have, for the last two years, put in well over a thousand hours to get at the truth of this. I know almost everything about what has gone on, and I knew even from March 2020, it's a very complicated and uh, hideous set of circumstances. I want to say this, and I apologize for disturbing people. My goal has been all along to save lives. By the measure or metric of a conversation that went on with an FDA representative in mid-August, related to a 1% rate of death among those complying and removing the demographic of five to 11 year olds. There were at a minimum of 1,200,000 Americans who were killed by the vaccine as of that time. It is my firm belief based on what I have seen, I can present evidence that as of now, there are 2 million dead. This needs to end. Basically, there is no efficacy, no practical efficacy in terms of doing anything with respect to value. The Lancet itself indicated that removed from what has been a horrifically corrupted vetting of these products uh, by the FDA and Pfizer, as well as Moderna, including what uh, ingredients that people aren't even aware of because the product information inserts are blank, uh, it is a less than 2% efficacy, which to me is almost nothing. And the reason I bring this up is I want to be an information resource. I want people to stop making these decisions based on information that is completely unreliable. And I know I have everything. I mean, every last detail, Dr. David Martin, who is one of the world's leading patent research researchers, 
has determined that this began 16 to 20 years ago with Anthony Fauci, uh, Peter Daszak of the Eco Health Alliance, and Ralph Barrick, as well as among uh, a number of different pharmaceutical concerns. Please, I ask you to review these practices, these policies, because the people that are being hurt worst are the ones that have taken the vaccinations and it's only gonna get worse. The immune system is collapsing almost uh, on an unprecedented scale. This is the worst assault in human history. And I appreciate the opportunity to speak. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, Laura Kuna. And if you've already spoken, please put your hand down if you could. Go ahead, Laura. You're still muted, hold on. You'll have to unmute yourself. Mm, is that not working? All right, you're unmuted. There you go. Go ahead. Okay, hi folks, how are you tonight? My name's Laura Cunha and I live in neighboring East Hampton, Mass. Um, that was a tough act to follow from the last fellow who spoke. I'm unvaccinated. I have not been vaccinated because of issues that he just raised. Um, I feel that we all have a right to what we feel is best for our body. Um, I think that going into Northampton to the restaurants and not being able to go in because I'm not vaccinated is totally not right. If you're vaccinated, you can still get sick. You can still pass it just like me, unvaccinated. So what is the difference? I'd like someone to tell me what the difference is. If someone's walking in with a vaccination card or not, there's no difference. Um, my family members, some of them have not wanted to be vaccinated and because of mandates, they've had to get it. That's not right. Our God living right is to be able to choose what we want to do. And like the young man just said, we don't know what's in these vaccines. They're supposed to tell us when we get them, what's in them, and they're not telling you. That's what they're supposed to be doing. Um, this would really devastate Northampton. Northampton restaurants and other proprietary businesses. Um, if nobody's going in, they're going to just vanish. You guys have already seen the, a multitude of businesses close, um, issues going on, and I, I just feel that it's not right. I have to wear a mask every day. Um, I don't like it, but I do it for protection, and we don't even know if the mask protects us. Um, we need to live our lives. We need to go out go to our establishments, um, support them. And I'm sorry, I don't have a written thing. I'm going off the call. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Steph? Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. So my name is Stephanie and I am a Northampton resident and employee, and I'd like to thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak this evening. Um, public health measures should be based on scientific data. So let's take a small dive into some available data and facts related to the COVID-19 vaccination. According to the Massachusetts Department of Public Health, as of December 21st, 76% of the eligible population of Hampshire County has received at least one dose of the COVID-19 vaccine and 84% of eligible Massachusetts residents have received at least one dose as well. According to the Northampton Board of Health website, as of December 16th in Northampton, 77% are fully vaccinated and 11% are partially vaccinated per capita. This is well above the national average of 61.2% of fully vaccinated Americans. Additionally, many continue to get vaccinated and receive boosters, thus increasing these percentages as well as increasing protection of those at high risk of COVID-19. Based on the data, this only leaves approximately 10 to 12% per capita of Northampton as not being vaccinated. Based on this, a COVID-19 vaccine mandate in the city of Northampton is not based in science nor public health, but is instead a means of clearly excluding and segregating those who are not vaccinated. Will this mandate be applied to those who are unable to be vaccinated? 
Will this mandate be applied to those who may have an existing approved exemption for their place of employment for medical or other reasons? Will you exclude this group of people because of their decision to not get vaccinated for health or other reasons? How can you make an unscientific decision to segregate a clear minority of people who have made a decision for the sake of their own health, as has everyone else? Such a mandate is not based in science and would not be an act of progress or inclusion in Northampton. Where will this end? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Wendy. Thank you for having this hearing. Um, I wanted to attend. I didn't read the particulars of the issue. And then when I did and I saw the commentary, I, it, it further um, inspired me to come here tonight. But I was planning to attend your next meeting simply to thank you for, for being leaders and setting a good example and doing, making the hard decisions to protect us based on the best available science. And I, like many of the people speaking, read many sources. And I believe that our Board of Health, as with the expertise that you have and the work that you've done and the shit that you've taken from people, I applaud you for the, the, the hard decision making that you've made. I also, I feel, and uh, listening to people, you have a very hard decision before you. Um, and I hope that what you, can, you are able to do before making a final decision is if you are moving toward uh, requiring the vaccine. And uh, by the way, I've got all three um, and I'm being extremely cautious. I wear a mask. Um, I would hope that there'd be some more uh, conversations about enforcement, which seems to be a very hard issue. I know that's a difficult issue. Um, how there can be resources made available to businesses if that's the route that you go to help with enforcement and also business loss that is a potential. I also wanted to just say that I'm full in with what Rose Bookbinder, who surprised me with her comments tonight, having been a longtime workers' rights advocate, I didn't expect her to go full uh, in the direction she did, and I completely trust her experience as a worker, as a workers' rights center former employee and a, a Mass Nurses Association uh, person that she is, that she can speak on behalf of a lot of workers. And also with uh, Jordana Starr, who was a business owner, also spoke to uh, a previous example with a smoking ban where, oh, it was going to hurt business, but it ended up was a draw in many ways. So it's a hard decision. I support you because you've made very good decisions. You are a leader and thank you very much. And good luck with figuring this one out. And I hope you'll work with the chamber and other businesses to figure out ways to make this work. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, Amy, Kaylin. Thanks, can you hear me okay? Great, my name is Amy Kayla and I'm the executive director of the Downtown Northampton Association. Many of the general points I was gonna raise have been made, so I wanted to focus on the specifics of the ordinance. And I'm imploring that any vaccine mandate that you might enact be well thought out, clear and easy to follow with as minimal an impact as possible on our small businesses, with a clear end date and a clear connection between the health department's end goal and the burdens being imposed to get there. Our downtown community collectively wants to keep all employees and customers safe and healthy, both physically and mentally, and I'm not yet convinced that the proposed order accomplishes this goal. In the six hours today, roughly, since the draft order was posted, I've heard from more than 20 downtown businesses, and I have a list about three pages long of questions, none of which I can answer, and all of which I think are deserving of consideration before a vaccine mandate is imposed. Three minutes is not enough time to share everything, but I wanted to raise a certain selection of questions so that folks have a sense of um, issues business owners are raising and things that I think are missing from the potential mandate. The first is, will there be a sunset provision? We've been through two years where small businesses have been asked to essentially wing it and respond with significant changes to their business practice on a moment's notice. And there's no more room financially, emotionally within the supply chain or anywhere for these businesses to continue to just wing it. They need to have some way of planning and one way would be a clear measurable sunset provision that they could rely on. Also, are businesses responsible for somebody who shows a fake vaccination card for terminating an employee who refuses to get vaccinated? What is their liability and where does it end? What sort of training will be provided by the Board of Health to businesses to enforce this mandate? 
Not everyone will have a similar looking vaccine card. Not all states have online passports. International visitors will have other proof of vaccination. Is the burden on figuring out what is valid and what isn't going to fall on the poor server who's stuck guarding the door? How will employees know what is valid and what's not? If there's a medical reason why someone can't get vaccinated or boosted, will, will business employees be put in the position of having to evalu evaluate those exemptions? Or are individuals with certain medical conditions going to be precluded from dining out or going to the gym or a show in Northampton? What's awesome. valid proof of a medical exemption? What's a valid ID for people age 18 and above? Is it only a driver's license? Any picture ID? How will you confirm ages for people under 18? Do they have to show birth certificates? Um, businesses are going to need... Um, yes. Suzanne, did, did you say that was time? I did. It was. It's time. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, Carla. You'll have to unmute. unmute. Oops. One more time. You're still muted. Oh, there Are we go. There? Yep. Okay. It was saying that I couldn't speak. Hi, um, my name is Carl Racine. I've lived in Northampton proper for 25 years. I have raised both my children here. I'm in the process of buying a downtown business, which has been a lifelong dream. I'm very committed to the city. Um, I'd like to say a couple things very quickly. There, there is not a state recommendation, a country recommendation, nor a CDC recommendation to enact a vaccination IDing system and there is no efficacy in this system as you're seeing the outbreaks in the cities that are doing this being so large we are in no comparison the size of new york city or la or any of these places i am also um ethically opposed to this and i just want to go quickly on things that people haven't talked about we are going to exclude exclude people who by their faith alone can do not vaccinate we're going to exclude people that have autoimmune disorders or have fought deadly illnesses and have finally recovered but cannot vaccinate. We are also going to do something. I want to talk about cafeterias, the word cafeterias. That means our schools. We are going to subject our children in schools to a level of bullying and segregation that you have not anticipated. I do not support this thing. I think that this is in a, a moment for Northampton's Board of Health to actually lead by example and be on the right side of history and not participate in the vast. Oh, Carla, we think we lost you. Oh, for a moment. Carla, we're going to come back to you. We can't hear you right now. Um, I think we'll go. Oh, there you're back. Wait, hold on. You're, let's unmute you. You were frozen there. Can you unmute yourself? Unmute. Uh, there you go. Uh, the, the, I ask you to consider the fact that there are suits, lawsuits coming across the country and across the world that challenge this to um, being against the Nuremberg Code. In 2025, we will have the longitudinal studies done on this. We will see the long-term effects of this. I am not opposed to people getting vaccinated. I And I want to say this right now, as someone who's been working, um, observing the business that I'm, I'm purchasing, I want to tell you this right now. The people that are in opposition to vaccination mandates are not anti-vaxxers. They are people that are fully mandated and just imposing the, vac the um, mandate for the mask wearing in the city has been hard enough and we've gladly done it. We've absorbed the cost of that. This is all stuff that we're doing as you've, as you've done, but I've been spit on. I've, been, I've seen my employees threatened. I've seen people that have vaccination ID cards get angry to the point of having to be removed from the business itself because they say, I have my vaccine and why do I have to wear a mask? So I'm um, telling you right now, as someone that has experienced this firsthand, we are going to lose our economy down, downtown and the workers deserve more than this mandate. This is also a mandate that forces them to get a vaccine to keep employed, which is directly related to their safety. There's no protocols to support us financially with this decision because this is a city thing that you're doing. It's not supported by the state or country. Thank if these you. workers have worked through this pandemic. They've Your worked through it. Up. They deserve better. Thank you. Uh, we'll go to Dot L, then Sarah Buttonweiser, then Jim Greco, then Daniel Winninger. Um, dot L. You're not unmuted yet. 
How about go. now? Yep. Now? Yep. Okay. Uh, my name is Dale Chapman um, from Amherst. And I would like to use my time just to read a couple of sentences from Amazon's number one selling book since it came out in November, The Real Anthony Fauci by Robert Kennedy Jr. Um, who has done extensive research on this situation and on vaccines in general. Um, this very briefly, he says, vaccine mandates are ostensibly based upon the idea that vaccines um, prevent transmission of COVID-19. If they don't prevent transmission, if both the vaccinated and the unvaccinated can spread the virus, then there's no relevant difference between the two groups other than that one group is not complying with government commands, forcing an entire population to accept an arbitrary and risky medical intervention is the most intrusive and demeaning action ever imposed by the United States government and perhaps any government. And it is based upon a lie. The director of the CDC, Dr. Fauci and the WHO have all had to reluctantly acknowledge that the vaccines cannot stop transmission. When Israel's director of public health addressed the FDA advisory panel, she left no doubt about the vaccine's inability to stop transmission of the virus or to stop sickness or to stop death. And it goes on and on. The book is highly informative, but it has been censored by mainstream media, although it's number one. Anyway, my opinion is that we are creating an apartheid society, and I know which side I'm going to be on, and I will not be able to shop anywhere. I'm just hoping that I will be allowed to go to a food store at some point, but this is definitely creating an apartheid society. Thank you. Thank you. Sarah? And you, Sarah Buttonweiser, do you want to unmute? Yep, thank mm -hmm. you. Hi, I'm Sarah Buttonweiser. I live in Northampton. Um, thank you for all the work that you've done over the last two years. Um, you have, I'm so grateful to all the efforts that people have made to keep all of us safe. Um, I have wished for a mask, for, for a vaccine mandate to feel more comfortable at businesses that I frequent and particularly at gyms, actually gyms and restaurants. I also can appreciate that in that we are in a crunch both between Christmas and New Year's when most people are on vacation and between a surge beginning and January when it is going to be just raining COVID. Um, so Mostly I, I can see what a hard place we're in and I hope we could figure out ways to protect each other with a mandate, but coming with some um, numbers that would help us to know when to begin and when to end this so that people do not feel trapped forever, but protected in this moment of what will be a quick, um, a pretty dramatic crisis. One of my neighbors is an ER doc at Bay State, and he just said to me after a shift, so much COVID. It's all he did all day. Um, so we, we just need all the protection we can have for now. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Jim? Hello? Yes, you're on. Okay, thank you. And thank you for all your service at the health department. It's been very helpful through, through these very hard times. I know it's not an easy job, but you've been doing great. So I would like to come on to say, and I am uh, the owner of Blue Bonnet Diner in Northampton on King Street. So I am directly impacted here with the restaurant. So I want to uh, voice my opinion and say that I'm 100% against this vaccine mandate uh, because I think it will negatively impact the business and the customers and employees. And I am here to serve the customers and the, the community. We welcome all people into our restaurant. 
And I do agree though 100% with the uh, sensible measures that we've been taking already with the masks and taking vaccines and having partitions up and all the things that we've done along the way, we've done everything you've asked to a T and we always stick to it. So if we were to do this, we would be obligated to enforce it, of course. And that is brings me to my next point where this enforcement of asking these people, we have a busy restaurant, on, we, have people, we have people that are at the door, they're did, uh, young kids. Uh, have someone else on the screen, can you hear me? So any? Go ahead. Okay, sure. So yeah, we're having these people that are gonna be having to do some checking of IDs and uh, all these, uh, you know, cards and different things and maybe turning people away. And these people may not be very happy with this. They may be from out of town. They don't know what's going on. And then I'm gonna to have to have people out there telling them they can't come in. There's hostile people. Uh, there could be some very bad situations. We had some tough times doing the mask but people got a, a used to it, but that's pretty simple compared to this kind of, we don't have a bouncer at the door. We don't have, you know, someone watching each door carding people as they come in. So I think it's going to be the worst part of it is trying to enforce this and people are not going to be uh, taking to a very, I have a lot of customers, maybe they aren't vaccinated, they won't be able to come, they'd be very disappointed not being able to come in. I think it will have a very negative impact on our restaurant. I'm not just a greedy owner wor worried about the bottom line, I am concerned for the employees and for our customers and uh, you know, I don't want chaos, you know, raining down. And I think all the, the measures that we're taking are very uh, acceptable. And I think this mandate would be unnecessary and won't really, you know, solve the problem, so to speak. But we're on the right road. If we stay on it, I think that we'd be, we could get through this without this mandate. Thank you. Thank you. Um... Next will be Daniel, and then we'll do Alehe, then Tidwell, Elena, Shelley, and Shayan McMahon, and then we'll get to the next row. Uh, Daniel, oops, sorry. Can you hear me? Yes. Awesome. I'm Daniel Winninger, a musician in living in Holyoke. I've lived in the Pioneer Valley for seven and a half years and consider Northampton my spiritual center. I would like to start by reading Article 6 of the Universal Declaration on Bioethics and Human Rights, Human Rights published by the United Nations in 2005. Consent. Any preventative diagnostic and therapeutic medical intervention is only to be carried out with prior free and informed consent of the person concerned based on adequate information. The consent should, where appropriate, be expressed and may be withdrawn by the person concerned at any time for any reason without disadvantage or prejudice. I'll repeat that last bit again, without disadvantage or prejudice for choosing or not choosing a medical intervention. And this is from the Japanese Ministry of Health website. Please do not force anyone in your workplace or those around you to be vaccinated and do not discriminate against those who have not been vaccinated. This is just in Japan. Now, some of my own words. Um, saying that a certain class of people, for example, the unvaccinated, cannot enter certain establishments is too similar to the whites only sign of the period of our nation's history, the dark period, or <laughs> that was darkened by allowing racism to flourish within our laws. Likewise, we cannot allow this new ism, what do we call it, medicalism, the discrimination of people based on the way they choose to treat themselves medically. I understand that safety is the reason for such a mandate, but don't forget, that security was the mantra that brought us to sign the Patriot Act, something we now know as draconian, an extreme overreaction, an extreme overreaction to, an, to a relatively unlikely threat. The war on disease is taking, a, taking on a tenor similar to the war on terror, 
another situation in which we slowly but surely lose our rights and freedoms in a never ending game of whack-a-mole with different iterations of of an amorphous and nebulous enemy we can never completely defeat. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Alehe. I think you're can on. You hear me? Uh, you're, you're not very loud, but we can hear you. Uh, can you hear me now? Yeah, it's a little better. Hi, everyone. My name is Alexa Sokol, and this is my personal experience. I am a transgender female to male, uh, and I'm also a Latino Native American minority who refuses to get the vaccine through personal experience. At six years old, I was vaccinated, and so was my sister. We were the only two out of the four children vaccinated and out of the entire household. Now, both of us got really, really sick, so sick that we had to be hospitalized. We experienced vomiting and bleeding from the groin from my personal experience that the doctor had no explanation for. I don't believe that she was doing the right thing, so I don't blame her for it. However, my brothers weren't vaccinated and were completely fine. So was my mom and my dad. Now, going some decades later, I took a vaccine a few years back, believing that it would help me from not getting sick. And again, I experienced deathly ill symptoms, experiences that had me just on the ground. Now, I have colored grandparents, and I did study the civil rights movement, and I am observing what feels like a repeat into what I studied in history regarding the civil rights and discrimination, just because you're of color, you can't drink in a fountain and go to the front door, you have to use the back door. So now for me, I'm saying is now I need to vaccinate because I have personal health, medical reasons. So I'm gonna experience the civil rights movement all over again, just with the vaccine men. And let me remind you that it's a mandate and it's not law. So can we find another solution because this is not helping me which oh i want to remind you i live alone i live at the walter sabo house and since i live alone and i don't exactly have the same support system as some other people i rely to go into these small businesses to have some sort of psychological peace of mind given the fact that we have all been shut down i don't have the same avenues to go to for places of relief the way maybe other people do so some of the small businesses, yes, I do go to that allow me to go and dine in without needing a proof of vaccination. So if you're in a vaccination, that's taking away my psychological and emotional outlet to get somewhere where I can mindfully channel these frustrations. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, Tidwell. Hi, yes. Uh, my name is Tidwell. I'm a Northampton resident. The, uh, I'm in opposition to the uh, COVID vaccine mandate, which is really gene therapy. It's not safe and effective. Much data and longitudinal studies are becoming available to evidence its ineffectiveness domestically and abroad as the injected can catch and transmit COVID at a similar and or higher rate. In October of this year, the Department of Defense released data of a COVID-19 tracking program called Project Salus from February 2021 through August 2021. It reported findings from 5.6 million Medicare beneficiaries, whom 80% are over 65. The report stated, quote, in this 80%, 65 and older population had an estimated 60% of COVID-19 hospitalizations occurred in the fully vaccinated through the first week of August 2021. And the fully vaccinated also made up 71% of cases through August of 2021. Evidence by bears, um, if you're familiar, an estimated 80% of adverse reactions and death happens within the fourth 14 days of the lethal injection. A Harvard study from this past year postulated that roughly 1% of bears adverse uh, reactions are uh, reported. So now let's go abroad to the UK for a monthly report in uh, Early December 2021, the UK Health Security Agency reveals that within a four-week period, October through November 2021, the vaccine accounted for 61% of cases, 66% of all hospitalizations, and 81% of all deaths. Also in the UK, European's Medicine Agency, the official medical website of the EU, the European Union, reported through November 13th, 2021, that there were 1,163,356 adverse reactions and over 30,000 fatalities from the Pfizer, Moderna, 
a J&J and AstraZeneca lethal injection. Back in the U.S. early December, the FDA was court ordered by a federal New York court to comply with the FOIA request freedom of information on the Pfizer injection and data around post injection follow ups of participants. According to this official document, and I can give you all this data if you'd like to speak to me after, in just 90 days of the administration of Pfizer injection from December 1st, 2021 to February 28th, 2021, there were reported tens of thousands of adverse reactions, including 1,223 deaths. Let's go to Israel. Israel during this past summer, where data from the Herzog Medical Center in Jerusalem reported their data through August of 2021 that the vaccinated accounted for 85 to 90% of all new hospitalizations and 95% of severe cases. I have a timer here. It's not three minutes yet. There is also two minutes. Yeah, on two minutes. For issuing yeah. unapproved authorization products, and you are in uh, violations of U.S. Code 360BB, termed authorization for medical products and use in emergencies, also expanded access to unapproved therapies and diagnostics. You're on Thank you very much. I'm sorry, we'll have to mute you to limit you to two minutes like everybody else. Thank you for your comments. Um, Elena? Yeah, Elena, you're on. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, good. Tidwell, uh, I'm sorry that your time is up. Elena, go ahead. Oh, <laughs> okay. I'm, I'll put my hand down afterwards. I got to look at and see where I do that. Um, Thanks for your time. Um, I just wanted to let you know that um, I'm immune compromised and my cardiologist had recognized that too. And um, we were going back and forth about vac vaccinations and so on. And I can assure you that just by viewing some of my older friends as, as I'm 66 and I have friends that are a little bit younger, a little bit older, and I've lost three friends, very good close friends that um, had immune com compromise where Dr. Fauci said those are the ones that should go and get the vaccine. Well, I totally disagree with that because my friends passed away with the blood, with, uh, a lot of blood clots that they had had. And um, it was heart wrenching to, to listen to them and watch, watch them suffer and die. So um, I am totally, totally heartbroken over this, watching grandchildren and parents um, allowing their children to get a jab. This is not even a vaccine, it's a shot. We don't even know what is in it. And we're listening to a man that continues to change his story from the beginning to the end. Dr. Fauci himself, you know, has changed stories from the moment this has started. That's not so bad. It's this, it's not this. You don't have to wear, wear a mask. And then all of a sudden you have to wear three, four masks. Well, those diapers don't do anything. They don't do anything for your face unless you're wearing one of those. Um, what is it, MR95, yeah, the masks. Yeah, yeah. Those are the only ones that do well. And if you really want your child to stay healthy and we wearing a mask at school, you better send them with 20 masks because they got to change them every 20 minutes, every, every half hour because of all the accumulation of bacteria that goes Time. on. Their own bacteria. So this is very outraging, disgusting that what, what is happening, not just in Northampton, but across across the globe. Thank you so, so much. Thank you. No, thank you for uh, Shelly. Hi, my name is Shelly and I live in East Hampton, but work in Northampton and also frequent many restaurants um, on a regular basis there. Um, I'm against the vaccine mandates and the passports and all of the above. Um, I think that it violates our fundamental human rights. And it also, um, notably the right to prior free and informed consent for medical interventions, the common law state and federal statutes of the Nuremberg Code from 1947 and the 2005 UNESCO Declaration of Bioethics and Human Rights established the necessity of informed consent which nobody's getting with these vaccinations. The vaccines are still the EUA 
product. They still have not made the commonality, commonality product, which is what was authorized as safe for vaccination. If you look at every single bottle that's being injected, they're still all EUA stamped. They are not commonality stamped, which is what they authorized. Uh, COVID-19 uh, must not become a pretext for forced vaccination. It'll set a dangerous precedent that will benefit not only the pharmaceutical industry's bottom line, while further airing the ability of the Americans to be in charge of their family's healthcare decisions. Vaccines cause injury and death that are far from rare or one in a million. A 2010 study commissioned by the Department of Health and Human Services reports that at least one vaccine injury for every 39 vaccines given. The vaccine adverse reporting system, VAERS, does an extremely poor job of capturing adverse events with fewer than 1% reported. The CDC refuses to take recommended steps to strengthen the data. A flawed and corrupt regulatory process enables vaccine safety shortcuts and fraud. No clinical trial for vaccines given for babies and toddlers and is used in an inerrant placebo control group in all, and most trials have followed young recipients for only a few days or weeks. Under the 1986 National Childhood Vaccine Injury Act, NCVIA, the vaccine manufacturers and healthcare providers cannot be held liable for vaccine injuries from federally recommended vaccines. The act allows companies to escape scrutiny and, dis and document discovery associated with litigation. Under the 2005 Public Readiness and Emergency Preparedness, manufacturers, healthcare providers, and government officials will be immune from liability for potential COVID-19 vaccine injuries and deaths, compensation through its countermeasures, injury compensation programs likely to be minuscule. HHS has a statutory obligation to study vaccine injuries, improve safety, and report biannually to Congress, but it's never done so once in over 30 years. The National Vaccine Injury Compensation Program, also created in 1986, pits vaccine injured claimants against HHS in an adverse adversarial and usually unsuccessful process. In over three decades, the program has compensated only a third of petitions filed. Even so, compensation awarded to date exceeds 4.5 million. Vaccine-induced immunity, if it occurs, at all wanes over time, sometimes rapidly, as we see with all these boosters. Outbreaks of conditions such as measles, mumps, pertosis, and chickenpox as highly vaccinated populations are not uncommon. Herd immunity and disease eradication cannot be reliably achieved through vaccination, but they can through natural immunity. American children have never been sicker. The passage of the NCVIA enabled an explosion of liability-free vaccines and one of the most aggressive childhood vaccine schedules in the world. Over half of 54% of American children now develop at least one chronic health condition and many have multiple health challenges. COVID-19 vaccines include gene-altering and inflammation-promoting technologies that may create genetic changes Time. to future generations. Lawyers must not provide cover for liability-free medical interventions that carry profound, unknown, de facto experimental risks. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much. Um, we'll hear from Sayan McMahon, then Laura Kuna, yes, then Crystal, then Julie Organic, then Safia, then Cassandra, then Taryn Lynn. That's who I see across my screen. Uh, so, Sayon, I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing that. Hello, Sean McMahon here. I'm a musician. <laughs> uh, Northampton is my artistic mecca, always has been. Um, by the way, your Facebook did say three minutes per person. Uh, just heads up on that. But the first thing I want to say is I feel for you guys, because if the Board of Health goes through with this, you're going to have your hands full. And I hope you know. Uh, how much work that will be. And in my opinion, it's unrealistic. I'm not for it. Get your shots, but I'm not for the mandate. Um, and, and I want everyone to picture the Northampton that would be in this case. I mean, Northampton isn't just a home to people. It's also a destination. All right. So Massachusetts is host to Native Americans. 70% of that population is unvaccinated. Um, Black people are over 50% unvaccinated. Hispanics, over 50% unvaccinated. We are looking at denying service um, to these demographics. And it's it's merely just a matter of, you know, the Wampanoag people are rediscovering their ancient spiritualities, their religious objections. Uh, Black people, Hispanic people are traditional. They're religious, uh, statistically speaking. So that could be part of the motivation. Who knows? 
I mean, I know we're not denying people going to grocery stores. I know this is about restaurants and movie theaters and coffee shops, but these things make people happy and people have the right to pursue their happiness. I disagree that this is want versus need. I think this is need. People's mental health matters or spiritual well-being matters. And, you know, we got Rastas in Northampton who object to body modification. We have questions whether vaccines are kosher, whether they're halal. Uh, we have fundamentalists, God bless them, who think that this is the mark of the beast. And that might seem laughable and you're entitled to your opinion, but no one's entitled to disenfranch and disenfranchise anyone for having these convic convictions or denying service. So I would just say, taking all these things into consideration, what the face of Northampton could look like if this change would be very different. And I want not just the Board of Health to think about this, but also the general public, because we want to we want to stick together. We want to love each other, and we want to maintain our diverse, beautiful mecca of a city. And that's all I have to say about that. And God bless you all. I know you guys are doing a lot of hard work over there. So thank you. Thank you, um, Laura Kuna. Yep, you. Can you unmute? Okay. Hey. All right. All right. Turn your speaker down. Can you hear me okay without an echo? Without the echo? Yes. Well, you have an echo now. All right. Turn that speaker off. Just mute this mute the speaker. No, hit the button on the keyboard and mute this, shut the sound off. Okay, Jasmine. Jasmine, can you hear me now? Yes, go ahead. Now I got to turn my keyboard up. We You're have good. two computers. We, can hear you. we have two computers here, Jasmine. So that's the issue. Let me uh, ask you a question first before I begin to speak. <clears throat> this public notice. Can you see this? That's no, not very well. Health. All right, it's from your Board of Health announcement today it talks about everybody having three minutes do we all get three minutes or did you change the rules i was not aware of that uh that announcement uh we announced at the beginning it would be two minutes because we have a lot of participants all right so what about the three minutes do i get my three minutes like it says here you can have two minutes like everybody else you may go all right we got rules changed okay jasmine are you the director of the board of health this is not a conversation. You have two minutes for public uh, speaking. I'd like to know where the director of the Board of Health is and why she's not here with you and why you have to take the heat for this. It's my understanding that the director of the Board of Health is Meredith something or other, O'Leary, but she's chosen to hide from this meeting. You know what? Northampton is on a downhill spiral. I'm from East Hampton, very successful property owner, business owner, and we have people knocking on our doors to come into East Hampton. We've got River Valley Co-op, we've got La Verquizana that just moved in, we've got an art gallery that just moved into our, our uh, mill section. Keep doing what you're doing. You're blowing out all the businesses from Northampton, you have so many open storefronts, because of policies like this, unelected officials making these stupid decisions, don't you realize the impact this is gonna have on your local business? Okay, if you don't want people to, like us to come to enjoy your area, we'll be glad to travel to West Springfield or Springfield or anywhere else but Northampton, but you're Thank only hurting yourselves. Thank you so much. Um, Crystal. Hi, I am, my name is Crystal and I'm an East Hampton resident and I frequent Northampton often. My family is currently down with COVID actually. I am yet to be tested. I have one child that tested positive and one that tested negative. And thus far, I have been able to only trace it back to having got my daughter having gotten it from someone that is vaccinated. And she got it from someone that is vaccinated. That alone 
has confirmed what's been repeatedly stated is that having a vaccine, no matter how many people are getting it, will not prevent transmission or catching it. It mitigates your personal symptoms. My, due to my health and religious beliefs, I have chosen for us to not be vaccinated and I'm not afraid to state that. I don't know what's in it. I don't know the effect it will have on my health. If I do have COVID currently, this will be my second time having it. I had it at the beginning of the pandemic. I am also one of <sighs> the immune compromised. I am at a greater risk of catching it. And it needs to be everybody's choice for various reasons. It is not going to do anyone any good to enforce the mandate like this. It's segregating. There is just, that's the thing is it's repeatedly been shown to be segregating. That's all you guys are going to accomplish with enforcing this. We don't know what's in it due to a lot of the things that have already been stated about the different laws and codes and everything else. I don't think that all has to be repeated. Many have already said it. This is something to seriously be considered. I am prepared to not have to be in Northampton for any shopping or going out and everything. I will go elsewhere. Should this even be temporarily enforced, I will not give my business back to Northampton in the future. I will stay out of Northampton. It's time. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Julie. Hi there. Thank you very much. Can you hear me? Yes. Very good. Um, so a lot of I I um I am vaccinated. Um, I got two doses of of the vaccine and felt like I was doing my part uh, as that was what was requested. Um, I'm not in favor of this uh, passport um, requirement or possible mandate. Um, and I know that perhaps this goes without saying, and perhaps it's just vernacular, but I, I'm still super caught up on this word vaccine that we're all talking about and that we're all exploring. So the definition of vaccine is a treatment with a vaccine to produce immunity against a disease or inoculation. Um, on the CDC website, they have the definition for immunization as a process by which a person becomes protected against a disease through vaccination this term is often used interchangeably with vaccination or inoculation. So I'm feeling really frustrated. I'm feeling like I was sold a bag of beans that I was requested and chose to do my part um, and felt like I was making a responsible des decision in getting a vaccine only to learn that uh, I was going to be potentially or required to receive a booster. I have a friend who's a healthcare professional. She works in nursing homes and she shared with me recently that her booster is only good for 10 weeks and she's going to be required to be getting another booster. Um, I haven't had a fever, a flu or a cold in 20 years and I want to choose to rely on my immune system. Um, like I said, I felt like I did my part. I don't think the word vaccine is useful or helpful at this point in time. I think it's actually, um, it's incorrect. And I also feel like it's misleading when people get an MMR vaccine, they are protected at a 97-ish percent immunity. Boosters are not required or recommended. So I would be very excited if the public health community uh, was would consider another term uh, to express what is time. Thank you very much. Thank you. Safia. Yes. Hi. Can you hear me? Yes. Go ahead. Okay, good. Um, I have a doctorate degree in naturopathic medicine, a master's in acupuncture, and a master's in business administration. I live in South Hadley. I've been a uh, resident of Bioner Valley area for almost 40 years. Um, and I love the area and the community. And what I see happening with Northampton area is discerning because the, the, the whole thing of, you know, Board of Health, you know, people should know what the science is, should be able to read, should research it for themselves. And I haven't found that most Board of Health members are doing that in various locations. Um, the such that I've researched for a year and a half, it's evident that um, 
COVID has a survival rate of 99.97%. Children are hardly affected. The Emergency Use Authorization Act is it, uh, uh, products of COVID, the PCR test, the antigen test, everything. They are not um, tested appropriately. Their long-term safety and efficacies have not been proven. And you can't mandate these kinds of things that are used under emergency authorization. They, they don't even give you the ingredient list. And so I find it really amazing that Board of Health members who should have the ability to cognitively assess this appropriately are even suggesting, even suggesting that they mandate these experimental drug injections for a disease that is 99.97% survival. And then they're expecting to exclude people from restaurants and other things. It's unreal. It's like, are we living in Alice in Wonderland? I mean, it's like these people, you know, you, you're either totally ignorant or corrupt. And I urge you to remember that you will be held responsible and accountable for your decisions on this. Because some of these things, people may be taken to court, although the court systems are not usually looking that great as far as upholding the law. But this is clearly a violation of certain laws, constitutional rights, our freedom of health. It, it's, it's insane. Anyways. That's time. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Cassandra, are you still here? Um, why can't I see Cassandra? Can someone unmute Cassandra? Uh, I think she left. Um, okay, we'll move on to Taryn Lynn. You can unmute. Okay, hi, did that work? Yes. Okay, um, I just wanted to say that I have worked in downtown Northampton since 08, 09, um, and I am again against the vaccine mandate for downtown businesses. Um, and like a lot of people have stated, whether you're vaccinated or unvaccinated, you can still get and spread COVID. They still both carry the same viral load. Um, so I don't understand why places would want to discriminate against other people and create this sort of divide when Northampton is supposed to be an all accepting sort of community. Um, the survival rate, like the woman before me stated is 99.97 if you're healthy. In a FDA virtual meeting, they stated this, which is for young boys, one in 317 boys ages 16 to 17 will get myocarditis after the first booster, it could be one in 25 will get myocarditis as a result of getting the vaccination. There's no long-term trials for this vaccine, this mRNA vaccine. And I think it's crazy that people are requiring passports for this. That's all, thank you. Thank you. Um, now we'll go to Casey, then David Rosenberg, then Jeremy Jones, then Isaac, then Corey, then SC. So Casey, you're up. Hello. Go ahead. Hi, um, my name is Casey. I'm the manager of a cafe in town, the Nourish Wellness Cafe in Northampton, where I've worked for the last couple of years. Um, we've, of course, just like other businesses in town, been very, very affected by this pandemic. Um, lots of people that were very, very upset when we had to start masking. Of course, masking up is no problem for us at all, but I feel that this is a very big decision to make for people's personal lives. Also, I also feel if this email went out sooner than this morning, there would be a couple thousand more participants, which I kind of feel like this was possibly done for a reason to avoid having more people. But um, I, I didn't really prepare for this. I didn't have much time to. I just wanted to be another person that was showing that their lives, their life is being affected by this um, after 
getting this um, email this morning, it kind of just like hindered the rest of my day and um, set me into kind of like a spiral of feeling a little depressed because I don't know what's about to happen to my life. Um, I have worked in the food industry my whole life for over 10 years, um, was potentially going to be taking up a business offer very soon in Northampton, Mass. I don't see that happening now. It's making me feel you know, second guess pretty much everything in my life because I would never open a place and then force everybody to be vaccinated to enter. It's completely against morals. I agree with somebody that spoke recently that said anybody who supports that is ignorant. It's very corrupt. And there are going to be people that are held responsible. There's already people that are lining up in the court systems every day with disabilities that are affecting them the rest of their life. People who have children that will never walk again, that will never be the same again. Everybody I know that has gotten COVID has been vaccinated. I have not been vaccinated and others that I know that have not been vaccinated do not get sick. Um, we wear our mask and we're fine and we're healthy. Um, I actually just went to the movies for the first time in about three years. This week and now I'm finding I won't be able to go out and live my daily life and do regular things again. So it's really sad. And it's something that I hope you will consider since most of Northampton won't be going out and supporting local businesses again. Thank you. Uh, David Rosenberg. Uh, just a short message. The people in the data do not support this. It, we all know you will oppose this regardless. This board is full of unelected rich Jewish doctors. We are tired of you attacking our way of life and attacking our children. We will resist. Jeremy? Hello, uh, I'm Jeremy from West Hampton Road. Um, I strongly disagree with the city of Northampton imposing the vaccine mandate because I think it will drastically harm the local businesses. Northampton is known for its wonderful restaurants, excellent food and unique stories and atmosphere, stores and atmosphere. This should not be a political decision um, or any sort of ideology thing here. Uh, these uh, these types of public health decisions must not be mandated. Mandating just sends a message to the public that we're too stupid to know what's right and wrong. Morals and compassion is what it comes down to. All evidence should be based on facts and data and not political ideology. When President Biden came into office, I was hoping that he was going to bring some peace and prosperity to the people of the country not more division. Unfortunately, that's been the case by telling everyone it's the vaccinated versus unvaccinated. Not everyone can get the shot like me. Personally, due to a medical condition I've had since I was 13, um, I can't get the mRNA gene therapy shot. I've discussed this with, in private with my doctor and I should never have to disclose that information to any business I decide to enter or be a patron of. Moving forward with the vaccine mandate is pure medical discrimination, point blank discrimination. And I predict there will be lawsuits filed by multiple people. Northampton's always been a place of good leadership. And at this time, I'm not so sure. It feels like it's becoming just another city that doesn't follow the science and data and just wants to feel empowered by doing what everyone else is doing, like Boston. Uh, why don't our leaders just start thinking outside the box and have some common sense and critical thinking? Start recognizing past infections, natural immunity, maybe reduce capacity in stores and restaurants, uh, masks. I mean, that's everyone seems to be okay with masks these days. Maybe just keep telling people uh, what what to do, you know, um, with hygiene. You know, just keep keep enforcing the hygiene and um, implement time. more rapid testing. Either way. Um, it's going to hurt the city overall. Thank you. Thank you. Isaac. Hello. Hi, my name is Isaac. I, um, I live in East Hampton. I frequent Northampton. I used to live in Northampton for a long time. Um, have lots of friends. I like to go to the restaurants and, and other places and meet with friends, but, um, I am completely against the mandates. I just don't, I do know a lot of people that have gotten the vaccine, which I'm not saying that I'm against vaccines. 
because um, <clears throat> as a child, you know, we we have to get some vaccines that are pretty bad for your body, but they do work. And the, this one, um, we still don't know really what's going on with them, how they're going to affect us in the future. Uh, a lot of cancer. I do have a lot of friends that already did all the vaccines and the boosters and they've been sick for the past four months and they don't even know what's going on with them. So um, I think that if you guys pass this, not only I won't be going to Northampton anymore, I do, um, I'll make sure that a lot of my friends get educated and understand what's going on. So I think this is gonna affect you guys a lot, the city of Northampton, which I don't think it's gonna be fair. Thank you. Thank you. Corey? Hi, yeah, my name's Corey. I'm the, uh, my wife and I own the Good Dog Spot on uh, 139 King Street in Northampton. Um, I just want to say we want to stand with the businesses. We're not directly affected by the proposed mandate um, right now, but we want to stand with the restaurants and the bars and the other businesses that are directly affected. Uh, we don't think it's going to have the desired result that the board or the city is looking for, and I can only see it uh, further going down the line and affecting us eventually. Uh, we've already been directly affected severely by um, not just COVID, but uh, some of the some of the restraints that we've had. We've got to close parts of our business or all of our business at times, um, and we're still trying to juggle um, what what the state and city you know restrictions are. Um, I feel it's, it's unethical and illegal to start tracking vaccination status of my 34 employees as if it's uh, sick time or vacation time. Um, and that's if the vaccine was 100% effective. Right now, I have three employees today who got it. All of them are vaccinated. So the fact that 100% vaccinated people can acquire and transmit the virus just makes this proposal kind of completely illogical to me. Um, Passage of this mandate would not only lead my wife and I to not patronize the city at all, it would probably lead us to move our business elsewhere. Um, that's all I got to say. Thank you. Thank you. SC? Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, thank you. My name is Stephen, and I'm in Northampton regularly uh, and frequent the businesses. In fact, my favorite restaurants are in Northampton. Uh, I am opposed to vaccine passports and, you know, I won't spend my dollars in a town that requires them because if you follow the science, it is clear that the vaccinated and the unvaccinated can transmit at similar rates. In fact, a study that was just published in December in The Lancet titled The Epidemiological Relevance of the COVID-19 Vaccinated Population is, is Increasing confirms that the vaccinated and the unvaccinated transmit at similar rates. This is unemotional science that I trust the Board of Health will be taking into consideration and relying upon as it deliberates any actions. So if the science does not support requiring vaccine passports, then this will be a purely discriminatory action. And where will it end? AIDS, tuberculosis, and hepatitis are far more transmissible than COVID. In fact, I would much more rather have COVID than herpes and will separate passports be required for those as well? I think this is an easy decision if you follow the science and I trust that the Board of Health will do what's right. And in fact, I'm surprised we're having this conversation because the science is clear. It is very clear that the vaccinated and the unvaccinated transmit at similar rates uh, and the Board of Health should have that information. Finally, I assume that all potential conflicts of interest are being transparently disclosed to the public by the board, as I imagine that the implementation of vaccine passport programs uh, will be a windfall to some. Um, and, and so I'm, I, I hope that that's being, uh, that's being shared broadly. Thank you. Thank you. Rory? You, you'll have to unmute yourself. There you go. First, they came for the unvaxxed. I'm Rory Woods. I'm, I'm employed at Spare Time Entertainment, the bowling alley by Route 91. The proposed mandate will not survive a legal challenge. 
Any ordinance that singles out specific groups of people for disparate treatment is patently illegal in Massachusetts, as decided by our state's highest court, the Supreme Judicial Court. See, for instance, Commonwealth versus Washington, Massachusetts case law, holding that the federal equal protection clause safeguards not merely against invidious classification, such as race, but also against an arbitrary classification of persons for unfavorable government treatment. Thus, a denial of equal treatment under the law is a violation of the Massachusetts Equal Rights Amendment in the Federal 14th Amendment. Because a government entity has carved out a denial of rights to this particular group, the unvaccinated, they are now referred to as a suspect class. Specifically, they are now a class that deserves the protection of the state's Equal Rights Amendment and the federal Equal Rights Amendment. The city of Northampton, by this mandate, will lose in court and will be opening itself up to damages claims by businesses such as my place of employment due to this ill-considered mandate. There's more case law to quote, including Commonwealth versus King, 374 Mass 5 uh, from 1977, Euler v. Bowles, um, US 448, uh, 456 from 1962, Pariseau versus Brockton, um, Hayden versus Grayson, and Commonwealth versus Bernardo. Once again, first they came for the unvaxxed. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Chris R. You can unmute. Go ahead. Hey there. How are you tonight? So, uh, you know, you have this this vaccine mandate. Well, or you want it to happen. Now, it'd be one thing if vaccine kept people from actually getting this this virus when that's simply not the case. The vaccine only helps those who have it. So in reality, uh, whether you're vaxxed or not, you'll still get the virus and any after effects are on you. The vaccine just keeps the sickness levels down so you're not in the hospital. If someone wants to be unvaxxed and catch the virus and go to the hospital, that's on them. It shouldn't affect business or any kind of uh, public uh, life, so to speak. Um, I think this is a, a very foolish maneuver on the Board of Health in your town. Um, and I, I think that you guys have not read the science, especially the science that's been reported in the news, even on Rock 102, that uh, scientists have found that this new variant has been, uh, yes, you know, more uh, easily caught. However, it's to the point where it's either like a, 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 a cold or a very mild flu. So I, I feel like there's a lot of panic over a lot of almost nothing. We're almost out of this. This is the, going to be the continuing trend of this virus. That's all I've got. Thank you. Um, Kevin? Can you hear me? Yes. Hi, <clears throat> my name is Kevin Mackey. I'm a, represent, I'm a rep, resident of Northampton. I've been here for about 15 years. Um, I do take issue with the fact that you guys said you'd give everyone three minutes, as others have pointed out. Uh, that was the way it was advertised on Facebook, and uh, it's another example of the censorship that you guys seem to be in the pattern of displaying on these meetings. Uh, I did also notice that you muted the chat from the very beginning. Um, why? There's no reason for that. And that just goes to show that you guys really just kind of do whatever you want. Um, it's clear to me that you're not going to listen to the people here, even though the overwhelming majority are going to tell you that the vaccine mandate is unconstitutional and is bad for the town. You're probably going to try and do it anyway, as I expect out of you. So my message is for the people here. Um, don't listen to these clowns, whatever they, whatever they decide. The remember, the power is in the people. Do not go by any of their rules. They are not lawmakers. They are not leg legislative bodies of government. It is the people's right to protect our own rights. And this Zoom nonsense needs to stop. Uh, because all they do is censor out 
dissenting opinions. That's why this isn't a Q&A. That's why they just tune out and look at their cell phones. So uh, Meredith, Joanne, and Cynthia, and all the other people of the, board, the Northampton Board of Health, my message to you is you're fired. And the people are going to take back their power and screw whatever you decide. Uh, Bonnie. Hi there. Uh, thanks for uh, thanks for taking me. Uh, thanks for everybody for your thoughtful comments. Um, I'm not here as an epidemiologist or anything like that. Uh, I I live in Southampton. I uh, lived in Northampton for many years. Um, I enjoy uh, you know minimal uh, going to restaurants at this point and, and coffee shops over the course of the while. I am uh, double vax and boosted. My choice. Um, what happens with me? Who knows. I guess we'll see. Um, but this is um, absolutely uh, a silly idea. In the winter in Northampton, no notoriously, the businesses get slower anyway, as this is spiking. Restaurants, doesn't matter on the year. COVID, no COVID, after Christmas, it's slow. And it's, in a, very, it's a very enjoyable time to go out actually because you can get a good table. Um, I've seen the city hurting really bad people that I know in businesses hurting really badly. Um, I have just as much a chance to give COVID to anyone that is unvaccinated um, just because I have all these three shots. Um, it, it doesn't make a difference. I hope uh, that you guys you know, make a good choice for this city and appreciate uh, you know, our history, which is rich in uh, respecting each other and um, it shouldn't even go to city council and you're just gonna have a big yell fest there. This is something that I don't think the majority of people want and the ones who are comfortable going out, they're gonna go out and support local business and support each other because we're community. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Um, Jeev, Jeev, sorry. Me? You're on. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, so I am a restaurant worker in Northampton. I've lived and worked in Northampton for um, 11 years, I think. And I'm seeing a lot of businesses and business owners talking tonight, but I'm not seeing a lot of workers talking. Um, so I can't speak to everyone's experience, but as a worker, this is mine. Um, working in food service during a pandemic is terrifying. Um, like, for example, Line Cooks experienced a 60% increase in mortality during the pandemic. Um, so I do support the idea of a mandate for a vaccine. Um, all of these people who are talking about how they shouldn't have to get vaccinated because of informed consent, um, I want to propose the idea to you that as workers, most of us have to choose between risking our lives and risking our safety and keeping our livelihoods. And when I go into work, if people are coming in, I absolutely deserve to be able to consent to what I'm exposing myself to. And if people are coming in and I don't know whether they're vaccinated or unvaccinated, I don't get to make that choice. And workers in this town and everywhere are what's keeping this economy that everyone is so concerned about alive. We have done an incredible amount of work. We have put our lives on the line. We are not protected and we are not thanked. And <clears throat> we absolutely need to have a voice in this um, and for our position to be considered. So thank you for your time. Um, keep, keep doing what you're doing. I'm sorry that this is uh, probably so difficult for y'all. Thank you. Thank you. Um, there's someone whose spot is called iPhone and you have your video on. Yeah, hello, that's me. Yeah, there you go. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, hi, my name's Quincy, a uh, lifelong resident of Northampton. Uh, I just want to start off by saying anyone who's paying attention knows that these vaccines are safe and effective. I'm vaccinated. Almost everyone I know is vaccinated. I think everyone should be vaccinated. Uh, but for me, it's a big jump to go from that stance to forcing folks to get vaccinated. Now, these vaccines are great at keeping people out of the hospital, 
they don't seem to be as great at stopping transmission. So the whole point of the vaccine mandate seems to me to be more about punishing people we disagree with rather than public safety. Now I get the frustration with anti-vaxxers. I share it, they're morons, but it's their right to be a moron. And this is just gonna kill Northampton businesses. If, if the typical restaurant loses 10 or 20% of their business from people who aren't gonna come from out of town anymore, that, that right, that's, that's it, they're, they're done. Uh, so I have really large concerns about how this is gonna affect the business community. I also think it's unfair um, to put this mandate out there and not help enforce it, to put the enforcement on the business community. Uh, it just seems unfair to me. Uh, so that's it, thank you. Thank you. Uh, someone else whose spot is called iPhone and your video is off. You may unmute. Yes. Oh, hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Hi, my name is Sahara. I'm a resident of Florence. And uh, we moved here about four years ago because we thought the schooling system was much better than where we previously lived. Um, unfortunately for my family, we are mixed. Some of us are vaccinated and other of us cannot be, particularly myself. This mandate would affect my family because I wouldn't be able to go out and enjoy things with my family because I have a specific medical condition that as put to the three hours I've spent talking in my doctors, is a 50-50 chance of me having bad reactions to the vaccine that I would continuously have to get because they don't have it down to you get one shot and you're done or two shots and you're done. Now they're gonna say that you might need four. So by you putting this mandate in place, there are places I won't be able to go to enjoy time with my family as a family and I would be left out and my children would not have their mother with them because you put a mandate in place that separates us, which I think is completely unfair. There are some people, and I'm sure there's more like me, who shouldn't have to explain to people my reason for not being vaccinated because it's none of your damn business. Separating families and separating people for their vaccination status is wrong. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, somebody whose square is called iPad. You can unmute. Someone named iPad? Okay. Um, Michelle. Can you unmute, Michelle? There can you, you hear me? Yes. Hello, my name is Michelle. Um, I am a, I've been working in Northampton since April of 2017. I'm employed by Fitzwillies and the Chosen Owl. I am not only a bartender, but a bar manager. I will not share my vaccination status with you because I do not think that anyone should have to. I believe that Northampton is based upon kind of a choice. Like we are for you know, people being themselves and not having to present a vaccination card upon entering a business. I, I did recently travel to Florida. I will say that it is very refreshing to see no discrimination. You can wear a mask if you want. It may be recommended. And I have no problem with the vaccine mandate or not, not I said that wrong, the mask mandate. My issue is with a mandate upon a vaccination to whom may some people may not be able to take them. Like, I personally am highly allergic to amoxicillin and penicillin and many other prescription drugs. So I will not tell you my status, but I think you can understand my stance. I will just tell you that I worked through this entire pandemic. I was one of the first callbacks. I had worked through this pandemic before a vaccine was ever created. It was in the works, okay? I burnt my hands off with hand sanitizer, serving the public kindly. I worked four doubles in a row every week. I serve to serve a community because I take pride in my job. I love what I do. And I think that this is going to be a huge detriment to small business, particularly. And it's, it's unfortunate. I just, I don't, I do believe it is a form of discrimination. Like we are a tourist town. 
And you're going to get people. I know people that have come from Australia, like this is that have come into the Toasted Owl, into Fitzwillies. And we're going to have these people and we're going to ask to present their vaccine cards. And what if they have four children with them? What if they're coming to dine at Fitzwillies? And those four children, they chose that they don't, they're not comfortable with their children getting the vaccine. There goes your downtown Northampton. Say goodbye. And I'm not trying to be negative here. I'm trying to wake you up to the reality of what is a possibility, a real possibility of the economy of of Northampton going completely kaput. And I stand. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Gwen and then Matt and then Jeff. Oh, sorry, uh, Gwen. Um, yes, hello, my name is Gwen and I live in Northampton. Um, you know, I felt like I needed to come here tonight and I just, I want to hear all sides. And um, I just want to say to people that the two minute limits are a new rule by the city of Northampton after the city council voted to approve these new house rules during the month of November, 2021. Um, it has nothing to do with the subject matter of the meeting tonight. And you can find those minutes on the Northampton website. And if you have feelings about that, please come to city council meetings. Um, so, you know, I have a lot of thoughts about this, but I just wanna say that, you know, the Department of Public Health does have to be sensitive to people who have experienced trauma as a result of a terrible track record with the FDA and big pharma. Those who have been most impacted by terrible mistakes by, by uh, allowing drugs by FDA um, are, are definitely um, probably opposed to these, these vaccines that I know that I personally was not going to be planning on getting a vaccine, but you know, it's a personal choice. Um, and I just, I, I guess I don't know how, how to really feel about it. I feel really conflicted, but I will say this. Um, it really is about a public health issue. And COVID vaccines have been tested in preclinical and clinical trials for 10 years now, actually. And so the claim that it is experimental is just, it's just not true. And, um, you know, authorities have been regulating the research of COVID for 10 years now. And, um, you know, safe monitoring has been going on. And so, um, it's really not like a research thing or an experimental experiment of any kind. Um, and so therefore it doesn't really fall under the Nuremberg Code. Um, in terms of voluntary consent, you care what you have to say. in terms of voluntary consent that covers research, which this is not. So that's all I have to say, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Matt? Matt Gears, you can unmute. Hello. Is that Matt? Someone called iPad? Hey. All right, so now one of you, um, Matt, can you wait for one minute? Hello. Um, Mr. iPad, you are on. Hello. Go ahead. Yeah, my message is for the business owners in town or uh, anybody opposed to this mandate. You know, we're on here, you know, pleading our case to the Board of Health um, that already has their mind made up 100%. Do you really think that they care about anything that you have to have to say? If they cared, why wouldn't this be a question and answer? Why can't I ask you guys a question? Like, why shouldn't the business owners be able to uh, figure this out for themselves? And why shouldn't they be able to, to vote on this? Um, the Board of Health, you know, they, they throw this out there on Facebook on a, on a holiday week, and they expect people to, uh, you know, like, act like, you know, they're really care, they, they, they care about the business owners in town and the people in town. Um, 
you know, you, you guys got to start, you know, not getting on your knees and saying, oh, oh, please. Well, we would really appreciate it if you would let us, you know, operate our business in town and keep paying these ridiculous taxes for you to operate our business. You know, tell these people that, no, you're not going to, you're not going to ask for any papers to go into your business. You're not going to ask for, for any, for, you know, you have to start saying no. The only reason this is happening is because nobody said no. And the reason nobody said no is everybody is too concerned about, you know, saying the wrong thing and aligning themselves with a political party. And, you know, um, if you think the board of health cares about you guys, you're crazy. They could care less, you know, their, their minds made up and, uh, they know it. You can just look at them. They can tell you, they can tell you when they say your time's up that you, you it's, uh, you know, it's, it's pretty sad that, um, you know, we've let these people take, uh, take power. And uh, it's going to ruin the city. That's time. Of course Thank it's you. time. Thank you. Um, now, Matt, I had called on you, but you didn't have a chance. Matt, if you still want to speak, could you please raise your hand, your electronic hand? So I called on you, and now you've disappeared. Um, let me just look for Matt one second. Matt, I apologize. If you want to speak, please raise your electronic hand again. I think he's up there. Um, oh, oh, there, there. I'm sorry. Okay, Matt, you're up. Hey, can you hear me? Yes, you're on. Awesome. Um, so yeah, first off, for the gentleman who said that uh, anti-vaxxers are morons, they actually changed the definition to anybody who's against a vaccine mandate is an anti-vaxxer. So you're sort of talking to yourself a little bit there. And um, yeah, and that sort of just sums this all up. Like two weeks to spread the curb and it's just like, the hits just keep on coming. It's like, when is it gonna stop? Like, when are, when are we gonna really wake up and realize that like we all have personal choice and they're just trying to gain power over us. And it's, it's pretty sad to see, to be honest. Uh, I've lived in this town um pretty much my entire life i moved out for a little bit i moved back i love it here um it's, it's my home and uh honestly the masks i don't think that they really work like if you're following like data-driven science like they just don't block enough microns to do the work uh they're they, they're just like unless you're wearing the n95 they're really not doing anything it's pretty suspicious to me that pfizer is blocking their vaccine data for 75 years um among many other things like if i haven't got the vaccine and i catch covid um my antibodies are six to 13 times stronger than those who have the vaccine so there's just a lot of fuckery going on excuse my language and you know i think people are pretty fed up with it um and if we bow down to this level of power vaccine passport like what's really next to be honest like we're going into full police state if you've seen uh Australia, you sort of know what's going on there. And uh, yeah, I think I think as a country and as a community, we should be better than this. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we'll be we'll hear from Jeff, then Kyle, then Jen. Uh, Jeff, you're on. Jeff Swanson. Uh, yep. Yeah. Can you hear me now? Yes. Um, so uh, my name is Jeff Swanson. I'm the owner of Anytime Fitness at 135 King Street. Um, my concern is the potential crippling effect of that making a vaccine requirement will have on an already crippled fitness industry. Um, we've have continued to do as you have asked and yet have never asked how this will affect our small businesses. We have already seen in my particular case 45% decrease in revenue since the start, 30% decrease in the membership in our Northampton location. What does that mean? Well, over 350 past members are now not exercising and will be a further burden on our healthcare system in the future. We had to reduce our staff. We increased our cost to maintain a clean, safe, and COVID-free club. We've had no COVID cases to date reported by any of our members. This is with or without masks. This is the same for all my other locations. We've had over 150,000 workouts since COVID started and zero cases attributed to COVID uh, in our clubs. The prevention of the further spread of COVID has to be our primary objective 
but we also need to ensure that our communities are supported and have the opportunity to remain active. We know that being physically fit can reduce, help reduce severity of COVID-19 infections and moreover being active can help us cope psychologically when faced with the challenges of these waves of the pandemic. It is your and our role to be thinking about how we can increase access to activity, not reduce it as we learn to live with COVID-19. The successes that we've contributed and things we've done, we've already avoided the high intensity group classes, we're wearing masks, we've kept our distance, we've put up barriers, we've actually created distance between our machines, we've sold machines so we can create more space, we've posted hours for hours of availability to our members to be off hours to have less people, we post wash your hands, don't touch your face signs, we've wiped down all our machines both before and after use, we've actually invested in beyond what's been asked of air quality portable filters that are helping to reduce the risks in our clubs. These steps have created zero COVID cases related to our fitness centers. The question remains, does exercise help protect against COVID-19? I think we all know the answer. I'm proposing that we take the opportunity to move into 2022 to use exercise as medicine, work with the Board of Health and the local fitness centers to come up with a program to make healthy happen in our community. I've spoken to the other fitness centers already today, uh, good friends of mine in the town, we're all, we all supportive of this. But we wanna be ready to help the community fight COVID with exercise. I know that's a big, big ask, but I think we need to start moving forward with COVID uh, as it's not going away. However, I, I'm not naive to the fact that as everybody stated, there's probably gonna be some decisions made later today. My proposal is similar to what New York did back in December 10th, going into and promote, proposed it for December 13th. We could continue with all people wearing masks to enter regardless of vaccination status, or if people wanna have fully vaccinated to enter with proof of vaccination, vaccination to enter, then give the businesses the option. Don't mandate it one way or the other, or all, all, of, all of the above. We want to have options, and that's what's, beautiful, what's the nice thing about who we are and what we do as a country. The first option certainly we're, has been working in the fitness industry. The, ex the second option, which is to put in this uh, vac vaccination requirement, is only going to decrease membership further. We're already at the, the, the threshold of staying, staying open, potentially Hi. losing great staff, added stress, and potential further closures of, of the, the, the certain businesses that we've, you've chosen to uh, uh, pick on at this point. Thank, thank you. you. Yep. Um, Kyle Moore Anderson. Hi, thanks for having me tonight. Um, my name is Kyle Anderson. I am the general manager of the Dirty Truth in Northampton. Uh, I have been a resident of this area for about 12 years. Um, I think many people are well aware that a week ago we implemented our own um, vaccine mandate for people entering um, our space to enjoy it. Um, it was a very difficult decision, but in the end, I felt that it was uh, for the safety of everybody, whether it was my employees, um, my customers, or the family I was going home to at night. Um, I, I know I have a lot of support within the town, but I also know that there was a lot of fear and that's, that's what I'm kind of hearing a lot tonight is the fear. And that has just been a constant theme throughout this whole pandemic. Um, the fear of, of the unknown, um, you know, the fear of not having your own choice, but I think what we all want to accomplish together is to get past this and to not have mandates, not have, um, you know, vaccines that control our lives and not have masks. But there are, there are a lot of supporting um, evidence, scientific evidence um, that, that says we have to do stuff together um, and, and control this, this pandemic um, rather than fighting each other on these different mandates and making it about discrimination, which clearly, if anybody knows our business is not the case. We are trying to create the safest environment possible for dining in, which is a very difficult situation right now. But um, in the end, you know, we want the support of everybody and we don't want our fellow business owners to, to be fearful um, of retaliation, which yes, we've received certain negativity, but for the most part, it hasn't been from our customer base. So I think we also need to understand who is retaliating against this 
Are, are they the people that are actually supporting our businesses or are they the people that just want to be heard and won't actually stand behind the small businesses that make up our community? It's time. Thank you. Jen A. Hi, this is me, Jen A. I'm from East Hampton. I am a door dasher as well, and I go to businesses who fear the Board of Health because they've been ridiculous. Um, I'm not talking to the Board of Health. I'm going to talk to the people. I've been to several meetings throughout the, the Western Massachusetts Board of Health meetings, City Council meetings. City Council is even looking at the Board of Health saying, what the heck? How are you even doing this? What effectiveness do masks do? Why are you mandating masks? They're literally having to meet with them. Um, we see this coming. We've seen this coming for a long time. We know what this is. We know you're not going to listen. Uh, do what you want. Or you're going to bring in your data person who no one is asking for because the data is chaos. You're going to bring in your data person and you're going to tell us you're going to do what you want and you're going to dismiss us. Even though we're all here to tell you we don't want the mandate every single one of us. And we are we are not just a few people. 279 people is a lot to show up to a Zoom meeting, but we're not just 279 people. And we need to have Let's Go Brandon gatherings and talk about this because we need to separate themselves ourselves from these people who wanna mandate things on us. This is America and we don't need them. Thank you, that's all I really wanted to say. Have a let's go Brandon party with no mask, no mandate. Thank you, Jennifer Taub. Hi there, thank you for holding this meeting. And um, I have, uh, I am fully vaccinated. I believe in the science of the vaccine. And as a law professor, I have actually read and understand where the Supreme Court has been coming down in support of these types of mandates. However, and this is a big however, I think it's a big mistake for the health department to impose this mandate. So I hope you heard me right. I am, I, I think that vaccines are great. I think the science is strong behind this. I think that this would be lawful, but I think it's stupid and I hope uh, that the city listens to the business owners here. Now, let me be clear. I'm really happy that a business, uh, I'm very happy that one of the businesses here decided to have its a, a, a mandate. If that's what they wanna do, you know, I might feel more comfortable going in to that business, but I want the businesses to make the choice. I also was really impressed by the person who owns the gym because he understands, and I think it's true, that physical fitness is very important psychologically and also for this, uh, to help with this, uh, this, this virus. But again, I'm, I'm pro-vaccine, but not pro the, pro the city making the mandate. And now, second thing though, I am greatly disturbed that for a long period of time, the people running this meeting allowed somebody to stay on this Zoom call who had, who had swastikas and had his name or her name was Jews will not replace us. Separately, that is anti-Semitic, it's frightening. And also there was someone earlier who said, who accused the Board of Health as being rich Jewish doctors. The hate and anti-Semitism, um, it's not necessary. Also the, you know, the, the mean-spiritedness and division, not necessary, we all love Northampton. I think we all are coming at this wanting what's best for the city. And I just happen to believe what's best for the city is not to have this mandate. Listen to the business owners and for those employees. Hi. Um, thank you. Thank you. Um, Drew, then Mauricio, Kevin already spoke, uh, Suzanne, then Nokia 2.2, then Hannah Mohan. Uh, Drew, you're on. Hey, how's it going everybody? I'm Drew, I own Highbrow Woodfire Kitchen and Bar in Northampton. Uh, first of all, thank you to Meredith and the Board of Health for your diligent work for the past two years. I know it has been anything but easy. Um, 
I am in opposition of the mandate. Vulcan spoke for myself and several other business owners when he spoke. Um, my staff and myself are 100% vaccinated by choice, not by force. Um, I know that the decision is probably already made, but seeing that this has been a 90 to 95% opposition on this Zoom call, which is capped at 300 people, um, I would really strongly suggest that we rethink uh, doing this. Um, we have a group of business owners, uh, about 25 to 30 businesses at this point that are in opposition. And if this does pass, this is not democratic at all. And there will be lawsuits brought. So that's pretty much all I have to say. And thank you again. Thank you. Mauricio. Yes, hello. Thank you. Uh, I'm from the city of Lynn and uh, I'm very concerned about what's going on right now. I want a lot of these people that say that they're on the side of science that are actually believing in these vaccines to understand. And also the woman that said there's no censorship or no trickery going on. Of course, don't be naive. They're blocking the American Medical Association. The American Heart Association just came out with a study talking about the actual headline of the study said, warning, these vaccines cause heart problems. Paraphrasing. I can post it as soon as I'm done talking and put it on Facebook and see how long it lasts. There's a lot of science against the vaccines, including the discoverer of HIV, Dr. Luke Montagnier, that has been voicing his opposition against this vaccine for 20 months. Also, former president of Pfizer, Michael Yeadon, retired just three years ago. Also former chief science officer at Pfizer, says these vaccines will lead to depopulation. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Thank you. Uh, Suzanne. Oh, sorry. Sorry, Nokia 2.2 and then Suzanne. Hi, my name is Brenda. I do of the vaccine mandates. It violates HIPAA laws. It violates the integrity of personhood. It's against our constitutional rights and it discriminates against those who can't get the vaccine. I am one who can't get the vaccine. And today I went into a business and because of breathing difficulty, I couldn't wear a mask. I was intimidated by a person yelling after me, miss, miss. And then the other person getting the manager and telling me I could not in the store because I could not wear uh, a mask. And then I said, well, I have an exemption. I have an exemption by the mayor of Northampton and I have an exemption by the board of health. I have an exemption by our governor. And they asked me to prove what exemption I had. It is, they have no right, it is unlawful, and it is their job to know the list of exemptions in the laws or mandates for Northampton and the state. Um, I was not allowed there. This is discrimination. Just because I am handicapped and I can't wear a mask, what does that mean even when I can't get a vaccine? On one of my medicines, it said, do not get any vaccines. So this is clearly discrimination against a community of people who one, have religious beliefs and do not want to get a vaccine that has been derived from aborted fetal cells. And two, they don't believe in putting something in their body that could potentially harm them. Um, and it, again, it's against um, people who are, um, disabled and can't get the vaccine for any reason. Um, this vaccine is experimental. Uh, it separates people in the community and um, it, you are, you're doing the wrong thing by discriminate, discriminating against people. This is um, really evil. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Uh, Suzanne. There you go. Hi. <laughs> Thank you for putting this, making this meeting um, public. And uh, I really understand that, you know, we all look for solutions for this. And um, I'm vaccinated myself. I wear masks. I 
you know, I trust that um, I'm all for therapeutic measures, in other words. Um, give out masks that are, have a reputation to work to everybody, especially to the workers who don't have a choice but have to be in the, in the offices. That's measures that, that would help people, actually. In terms of the vaccine, whether we are vaccinated or not vaccinated, we still transmit the disease. And yes, maybe some people land in a hospital, hospitals get overloaded, but in the bigger picture, with a mandate, you are, you are welcoming discrimination. You're welcoming a divide, not just for consult, uh, consenting adults, but for children. Uh, you're making it so much harder for businesses, for our economy, and that all affects everybody. And it affects, so anyway, I'm, I really would, would urge you to reconsider a mandate. I think it's not the right way to go. I think it will, if that goes through, it will uh, have implications that will go way beyond uh, vaccines. And um, I really am attached to our democracy. I'm attached to, to being able to choose. Uh, what's happening with my body. I chose the vaccine. I respect, and the person talking just before me was an example of somebody who simply cannot get a vaccine. And there is many other people like that. That's and fine. many, okay. So anyway, I urge you to reconsider for the health of the community. Thank you. Thank you. Um... We'll hear from David Connor, then Annie O'Connor, then Ryan's iPhone, testing laptop, and Josie. David Connor, you're on. Hey, you can you hear me? Yes. All right, so I just wanna say thank you guys for everything you guys are doing. And I'm very sorry with all the emotional people coming on getting, you can hear the anger in their voice and they're kind of, directing it at you guys but I know you guys can't answer questions but my only question for you guys is if a vaccine mandate to enter places happens how is that going to be enforced I just people already aren't listening to the mask mandate you go into Walmart half the people don't have it on half the people have it under their nose half it's I just don't understand but um another way we see all the anger and violence across the United States when these things do get put in, um, New York especially. Uh, I'm sure the woman that works at the Toasted Owl doesn't want to get assaulted because, you know, someone doesn't want to get vaccinated. So I, I, you know, I'm for the vaccine mandate. I just don't think it's right to put in for this area I, it, again how do you you know what i mean how do you police it without getting people attacked but uh i want to go back i'm sorry for the people that are yelling at you guys and saying all these things we i at least i understand that you guys you know you're trying to do the right thing you're trying to have every, all the input and you know I'm sorry for you guys having to deal with all this. And uh, I'm from New York, Northampton. I had my vaccine. I have my booster coming in on the 5th. I had a very bad reaction. I'm going to still go with the, the booster. I don't want to get sick with COVID. Uh, I had family members get sick. So I I know for, for firsthand how that is when people get sick. And I'm still... You know, I'm sorry about all the hate. So you guys have a good night. Thank you. Um, Annie O'Connor. You haven't unmuted yourself. I'm trying to. There you go. Oh. Okay. Okay, great. Hi, yeah, Annie O'Connor. I'm a resident of Southampton. Um, and I've enjoyed going to Northampton since I've come to the Valley in 1980. 
Um, uh, I want to echo a lot of the uh, things people said. It sounds like they've done good research. Um, and I also want to address the board and a lot of people, smart, intelligent, well-spoken people who are saying things that can be easily found in most media and most information that everybody typically relies on. Um, but having been subscriber to um, websites for over a decade, health websites, uh, alternative health things, right? Um, I want to say that there's a lot of information in case a lot of everybody, the board, the people, there's tons of information that is being heavily censored. People have lost, you know, kicked off of YouTube, Instagram, et cetera, et cetera, all this. Um, and, and very reliable, well-researched. Uh, someone mentioned Robert uh, Kennedy's book, which contains only stuff that's, uh, you know, from CDC and, and whatnot. Um, so it's, I understand a lot of people are saying things that are actually, you know, not well researched and they're, you know, the fear driving everybody, um, I don't know, to lose their critical thinking. I'm not sure what's going on, um, but there's a lot of censorship going on. So how can people actually find, follow what the science is? Um, and the si science is, you know, by definition, not a static thing. It's questions asked. So that's that's that one aspect. Um, uh, ex there's a Dr. Robert Malone. He's the inventor of the uh, basis of the vaccines of the mRNA. If you can find anything, you know, if you can still find him somewhere, he because he's been well censored. Okay. Also about children getting vaccines, please try to find. You know, kids are getting cardiac problems. It's 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 not good. And they thank you, thank you. Uh, Ryan's iPhone. Hello. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to speak this evening. Uh, first, I would just like to address the gentleman who plans on getting the booster after having an adverse reaction. I would say first off, turn the TV off. Second of all, research. Um, zinc ionophores and early treatment options like hydroxychloroquine and quercetin and zinc. That'd be a lot better option for you at this point. And secondly, with life comes risks and it's up to everyone to do their own risk assessment in life. And if you're that scared, then maybe people should just stay home, you know, because at this point, clearly the vaccine doesn't stop transmission. So my question is, what does a vaccine mandate accomplish other than separating and segregating society. And my last thing would be that, did you know that 74% of black men under the age of 44 in New York are unvaccinated? So where's the Black Lives Matter crew right now? Because I know there's a lot of them in Northampton. All right. And I appreciate you giving me the opportunity to speak this evening. And I hope that people would uh, start to use their brains, turn the TV off and hail Fauci. Thank you. Um, testing laptop. Hi. We can hear you, go ahead. Okay, yeah, um, I'm sorry for all the political innuendo all through all of this, it should be science-based. People saying that being vaccinated does not impact your transmissibility and that is so false. Um, we all know that viral loads diminish with every vaccination you receive. You're less transmissible, less contagious. So bravo to everyone who has taken that opportunity to get tested and vaccinated. Um, all I can say is that Northampton needs to do what we need to do to keep our residents safe. And if that implies that we need to ask people to get vaccinated, so be it. The country now is undergoing another surge. We need to take a look at exactly what's going on with whether you're vaccinated or not, your increased risk with this new strain. And if we don't do what's expected, then people who 
are at risk will not go to the businesses in Northampton, will not go to the health clubs. And if we don't know who's next to us on a treadmill breathing and we don't know what their viral load is, we're not gonna go to that business. So I know that there are, uh, Bay Road Tennis Club right now is asking and a lot of the tennis and pickleball people over there, we have to disclose our vaccination status if we wanna participate. It gives us peace of mind to know that we're all in the same status. We're doing the very best we can to protect one another. Uh, we are more likely to participate and to go to businesses that allow us that peace of mind. Um, and also, I would also like to ask the Board of Health to make those quick tests available to everybody that needs one. That's another way to protect the public. And I would like to think that at some point, the community of Northampton could come together without all the politics and protect its residents. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Hannah Mohan. Hi, yeah, thanks for letting me speak. Um, thanks for doing this in the first place, having you know, caring about the people of Northampton and stuff. I get it that it's coming from a really good place. Um, I myself got vaccinated. I believe in the science of vaccinations. Um, I, however, I don't believe that they should be mandated, I, especially for local businesses. I, it's just like time and time again in history, we mandate things, but people do what they wanna do. People are gonna get vaccinated or people are not gonna get vaccinated. And that's, that's really life. So what you're going to really do by mandating is you're going to have people go to the stores less or you're going to drive down local business. And I, don't, I just don't think that's what you guys want to do. But I, I think it should be up to the businesses themselves. I think we want to mandate, mandate, mandate and do all these regulations. I think, I mean, like I get masks and stuff, but... Freedom of choice, yeah. I mean, I just, I just think it should be up to up to them. And if you guys do want to mandate something for the business owners, I think you could consider mandating handicap accessible storefronts. Just an idea. But yeah. Anyways, that's my two cents. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Josie. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Hi. Um, so I read uh, your the post about this on Facebook, and part of it just was alarming to me about five children that are five years old and up having to prove their vaccine status. And that just seemed, um, well, I'm just going to tell you about my daughter. Um, so I have a child who has a one in a million mRNA disease and her immune system breaks her bones. So the mRNA in her body is expressed, um, it's, it's higher than it should be. And it sends these messages that say break bones, break bones, break bones, instead of doing what's supposed to do. So if I put this vaccine into my child, this vaccine could kill my child. Now, I know that there's a lot of people who don't think children like my children, like, like my daughter exist. They believe that everybody who doesn't wanna get their child vaccinated is an anti-vaxxer um, or, you know, like a Republican or, you know, it's all, it all turns political. And that's what makes people put these blanket, these, these blanket mandates on people as if all children are the same and all people are the same. And that's, that's just not the truth. My, my husband, my daughter's father, works in Northampton. He works at a place that she will no longer be able to visit because she is very sick. And this is, um, it, it's simply alarming to me. Um, what she has is genetic. And um, my other two daughters aren't as old as she was when she presented with it. So I will not vaccinate them because they could have what she has. 
it presents when they're 10 years old. So as someone who lives outside of Northampton, but comes frequently to Northampton, I believe that it is maybe well-intentioned, but dangerous and time. very time. poorly thought out about vaccinating children. Thank you for letting me speak. Thank you. Oops. Um, um, Casey. Hi, um, I know I already spoke earlier. I guess I just kind of wanted to reiterate a couple of things. Oh, I'm sorry. If you spoke already, I think we're going to have to move on. I'm sorry. Um, Jess, Jess Dawson? Yes, can you hear me? Yes. Hi, um, my name obviously is Jess Dawson. Um, I currently live in Chicopee, but was born and raised in Northampton, went through the Northampton school systems, um, and honestly just recently moved to Chicopee. Um, but my son is a part of the Northampton school system. And as a mother of a child that has gone through this COVID pandemic, um, this is highly concerning. Um, by your rules, if, you know, um, places like the Academy of Music and um, halls and such, uh, his graduation won't be able to have some of his family due to this mandate. Not only this, but small businesses in Northampton who I have friends that own these will struggle through this mandate. I am personally vaccinated, um, including my booster, but that was my personal decision. I have family that um, have medical conditions that cannot get this, man this vaccination and I am all for them not getting it because it, is, it could be a detriment to themselves. Um, I think it really needs to be thought through and I'm hoping that the Board of Health has not already made their decision up and is actually listening to us as a community with our concerns that this mandate to have to prove our vaccination would be very detrimental to not only the businesses but the community as a whole. It is a complete segregation and I am very much against it and I really hope that you take the time and honestly listen to your community and the science behind this. Um, and that is what I have to say. Thank you very much. Thank you. Troy. Hey everyone, uh, my name is Troy Cronin. Uh, I've been a member of Northampton uh, my whole life. I've really loved it here. I've thought it's like a really inclusive place. Um, I'm a disabled man. Um, I am amputated below the knee. And this mandate is very frustrating to me because it goes against my whole belief of what Northampton stands for. Um, Northampton should be a place where your beliefs, you can believe whatever you want. And it doesn't mean that I have to support your belief, but I support, support your ability to have that belief. I support your ability to be able to do what you want and for your health, your own health decisions to be your choice. Um, I would never tell anybody what they have to put in their body. And I think that giving people the choice and educating them and letting them come to that decision on their own is the best for everyone. Um, rather than having um, a needle forced into somebody's arm. And um, I think that this is something that we have to, a problem we have to solve as a community and we can't just force it. And um, I really love this town. I hope that the Board of Health can make the right decision and listen to the people and um, that we can get, not only get healthier, but use this as a time to come together as a community. So thank you. And um, I hope you guys can come to the right decision. And uh, yeah. Thank you. Uh, Jonna's iPad. Hello? Hello, you're on. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, I, I think people, I think one thing is, it seems like people are missing the fact that this is not a mandate that everyone has to get a vaccine, um, but it's a mandate um, 
you know, that, that it's required if you're going to go into a public place and put other people at risk. So that was one thing I just wanted to bring up. Also, you know, I work, I'm, I work at a gym. My husband works at a salon. We have some friends who work in restaurants. Um, and I speak on behalf of many of us who don't feel safe at work um, because people are not so good about wearing masks. That, that's one thing. I feel like masks are one of the easiest ways to reduce risk and should continue to be required. Um, but we also really wish that our workplaces could require vaccines, not only for our own safety uh, in our workplace, but also for the safety of our clients, uh, many of whom who haven't returned in almost two years now because they don't feel safe. Um, we've spoken to many of them. Some of them come to see us at, at home um, and we take a test before we do that and we wear masks in order to be safe. Um, and so I don't know that this would hurt businesses so badly. I actually think in some cases, uh, a lot of people would feel safer coming back and it might be better for businesses. Um, and actually my husband and I uh, don't go out very much and would go out and patronize more businesses if we knew the other people uh, around us were vaccinated. So that's just my opinion. And I wanted to add, thanks so much. Thank you. Uh, we'll go to Susan, then a phone number, then Tony, then Samantha, Jen, and Melanie. So first, uh, Susan, you can unmute. Hi, can you hear me? You're on. Great. Um, I just wanted to ask, uh, make a request of anybody who has been on this call that has concerns that the unvaccinated carry a higher load, a higher viral load than the vaccinated, I would encourage you to skip your favorite news network, to skip your fact checkers, and to actually go ahead and look at the scientific journals and listen to the scientists who are clearly demonstrating this. You don't have to look very hard, but I'm asking you to just look beyond where you normally look and look at the actual scientific research that is being shown even more so with these new, the new variant, that there is no difference in the viral loads. At the peak of viral load, it is the same in the vaccinated and the unvaccinated. And this is a linchpin of this whole argument. And I really want, I really encourage everyone to really go and look this up themselves and, and, and to really understand where you're coming from and, and that your fear, fear is deeply rooted Fear and irrationality go hand in hand. When people get very afraid, they forget to really look at the facts. And I really encourage people to just look at the facts again for themselves. Go look it up. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, somebody has just a phone number, a 1781 number. Are you there? Oh, yep, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Hi, um, I just wanted to quickly um, say that I am opposed to vaccine mandates. Um, I know some people, it seems like they're speaking about these as a means to kind of end uh, what we've been going through for the last two years, but the definition for fully vaccinated has already changed and it's been less than a year since they came out. Now it's two shots and a booster, then it will be four shots, then it will be five and so on and so on. and when is enough going to be enough? Um, so I just think that these vaccine passports are not only unconstitutional, um, but also a violation of medical privacy rights uh, that we all have in the state of Massachusetts. And by implementing um, a vaccine mandate that we, you are, the town of Northampton is advocating for segregation and discrimination. And, um, you know, if, if, this actually goes into place, I certainly will not be doing business. Um, and I know it sounds like a lot of people won't be doing business in the town either, which 
is going to be detrimental to the small businesses that have already been struggling. And uh, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Tony. Hi. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Great. Uh, I'm a property owner and a taxpayer in Northampton, and I urge the board not to approve any mandate for any activity in the city. Many on this call tonight have presented on the ineffectiveness of these shots. And I think this is worth repeating. The COVID shots do not prevent infection or spread. The COVID shots do not prevent infection or spread. This one fact completely obliterates any justification for vaccine mandates. Even the manufacturer's own test data doesn't claim to prevent infection or spread. And the Northampton Board of Health even recognizes this. Yes, it's true. The Northampton Board of Health mask order from August 9th of this year, in speaking about people who are vaccinated, says, and I quote, we are learning that these individuals can still spread the virus. Northampton Board of Health, you have admitted on the record that COVID vaccines don't stop the spread, yet you are still trying to coerce a population into taking an experimental unapproved drug just to participate in society. Why? The city deserves to know. Many on this call have spoken of the grave dangers imposed by these shots. We've got 20,000 deaths reported to the various database. Others have said the actual numbers are probably much higher. So Northampton Board of Health, I'm addressing you directly. What will you say when a parent comes to you saying their child died from a vaccine just because he wanted to go to a restaurant? What will you say when you are placed at blame, when vaxxed and boosted people develop neurological disorders just because they wanted to go to a show? What will you say to a young athlete from Northampton High when he develops myocarditis and can no longer play a sport all because he wanted to go to a gym? These events are coming. They're already happening in other parts of the world, other parts of the country. What will you say? You will have to answer to these questions and much more if you enact this mandate. That's time. Thank you. Um, Samantha. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Hi, my name is Samantha and I live in Leeds. Um, I've been shopping in Northampton for the last 12 years or so. Um, and most of my business is in Northampton. Um, and I am opposing the vaccine mandate. I think that it should be left to the businesses themselves. Um, I know a majority of uh, folks that are in my life are unvaccinated due to their own health reasons or their own personal choices, which they are entitled to. Um, you know, and when we go out into public, what I have noticed is I'm, I, as well as those around me um, in my circle are very careful. Um, you know, when we go to the grocery store, we wipe down our cart, we hand sanitize our hands and we wear a mask when we go into the grocery store. And we've seen, you know, a lot of folks that are vaccinated that choose not to wear a mask because they are vaccinated and has it has been proven that the vaccinated can still contract COVID, can still spread it just as easily as those who are unvaccinated. So if if this mandate goes into place, you're still going to have the same issue of COVID being spread to everybody because most of those folks, and I'm not speaking for everybody, but what I've seen personally from my own experience are careless because they are vaccinated. Um, you know, I'm vaccinated, I'm not gonna get sick, but they still can spread it to everybody. Well, those who are unvaccinated, we're sanitizing absolutely everything in sight because A, we don't wanna get sick or we don't wanna get anybody sick. Um, I, I honestly think that it would be a big mistake and it would, you know, it would impact a lot of people's lives who have chosen not to get the vaccine for their own health reasons. I mean, especially the elderly, they won't even be able to go into Walmart to get their prescriptions from the pharmacy because there's a subway in there. There's an eatery. So folks that have gone to Walmart for the last 30 years to fill their prescriptions, they won't be able to. And if, you know, they're in their 80s 
and that's the closest place to them. Are they going to have to drive to another town and find a new pharmacy? I just think that it's unfair. I think that it's discriminatory. I think it's going to be a, a, a very poor decision on the people of Northampton. Um, and I sincerely oppose. Thank you. Thank you. We'll hear from Jen, then Melanie, then Pamela. Jen? Good evening, can you hear me? Yes, you're on. Great, thank you. Um, I'm a resident of Northampton and the common theme that I'm hearing tonight from those who support such a discriminatory mandate is that it would make them feel better if those around them were vexed. They are offering their support for this based on feelings, not data and not evidence. And to those in this meeting who have claimed or believe these vaccines reduce transmission, please go read the paper that was recently published in the medical journal, The Lancet, titled Transmissibility of SARS-CoV-2 Among Fully Vaccinated Individuals. It speaks about a recent UK study that showed that the impact of vaccination on community transmission of circulating variants of SARS-CoV-2 appeared to be not significantly different from the impact among unvaxxed people. It also speaks about COVID-19 breakthrough infections among fully vaccinated healthcare workers in Israel. It talks about growing evidence that peak viral titers in the upper airways of the lungs and culturable virus are similar in vaxxed and unvaxxed individuals. A recent investigation by the, excuse me, by the CDC of an outbreak of COVID-19 in a prison in Texas showed the equal presence of infectious virus in the nasopharynx of vaccinated and unvaccinated individuals. Similarly, researchers in California observed no major differences between vax and unvax individuals in terms of SARS-CoV-2 viral loads in the nasopharynx, even in those with proven asymptomatic infection. There is no justification for VAX passports other than desire for control by tyrants. Thank you. Melanie? Melanie, can you unmute? No, oh, sorry, there. Okay. There you go. Hi, um, I've been living in Northampton for almost 10 years. I have a son that goes to high school um, and I'm opposed to any vaccine mandate. Um, I have had both shots of the Pfizer as required by my job, but um, my son has only had one shot. Um, data out of Israel showed that kids who are teenagers, one shot would be sufficient for them. Um, so I didn't allow him to get two shots because I did not, as the data showed, that he had a high risk for um, myocarditis. But I'm also opposed to the masks. I don't think anybody should be mandating people to have restricted freedoms. Um, and I, I understand that a lot of people have getting misinformation when it regards to all of this in the pandemic. But if you're wearing a cloth mask on your face when you go to a store, we have it's already been proven ineffective. We know that even the medical paper masks are not effective. The COVID virus is an aerosol and it is 0.1 microns. A paper medical mask cannot filter out anything smaller than 0.3. So if you're not wearing an mm -hmm. N95 or an N100, you are not protecting yourself. And those even need to be fitted securely to your face. That is the real science data. And if you think that wearing a mask and then you sit down in a restaurant and take off a mask while you eat and drink, that you just have some magical barrier around you, that's just, that's just insane. And I go to the gym and I cannot go there because I cannot wear a mask while doing cardio. I have to drive to Holyoke, Chicopee, and West Springfield currently just so I can use the gym facilities in those towns. And that's unfair since I pay to live in this town. And I am not, I, I understand that a lot of people are afraid, but that's not, you, my freedoms shouldn't be restricted because you have an emotional fear and you're not listening Hi. to the data. Thank you. Thank you. Pamela. Hi, thanks for your time. 
Um, a lot of interesting points have been made and I appreciate hearing everyone and seeing that there's a lot of educated people out there about what's going on. And I think, again, a lot of that fear does is based on you know, us all having different sources of information and so forth. So hopefully we can connect um, on some agreement in the end on, on where, where the science really sort of lands in the end. Um, I'm a private business owner in Northampton. I patronize Northampton regularly. There is enormous danger in the false sense of safety that being vaccinated leads to um, through the mainstream media. As we've mentioned repeatedly, it does not prevent uh, the spread and it encourages risky behavior. So people think they're on high risk. They think oh, I can go now to that gym and uh, I'll be fine. That's not the case. And I, I really, that, that's concerning to me that people think they are safe. If a citizen is truly afraid of getting COVID, they should uh, refrain from congested public areas and simultaneously read up on ways to boost your immunity, not rely on a vaccine mandate to protect themselves as they're putting themselves at risk, as I've just said. Um, I wanna also uh, mention uh, if Northampton wants to lead the way, we need to embrace our philosophy of healing naturally and proactively, which we've always led the way historically on. As Dr. Malone uh, mentioned earlier, the inventor of the mRNA tech technology states, we are not going to vaccinate ourselves out of this pandemic. President Biden yesterday stated there is, quote, no federal solution. Three weeks ago, a judge blocked Biden's vaccine mandate for federal contractors. This is reflective that lawsuits are lining up, even if you opt in at this time to the mandate. My guess is it will not likely hold up for long. Uh, there's, there's many references, and I'm no lawyer, but I've heard a few things thrown around, code, code section 2331, Deceptive Medical Practices, Medical Standard Acts, Federal Trade Commission Act. There's, there's so many things that you're gonna run into. Um, so I would appreciate in the end, if you could let us know two things. Uh, what science will you be using to make your decisions? Um, and second, as someone else asked, uh, whether there are financial invest, uh, incentives for the town, and if so, if you could please disclose those. I also ask that no decisions be made until Robert F. Kennedy's um, book, uh, The Real Anthony Fauci, be read. Uh, let's not let this be the pandemic, pandemic of the uneducated. Thanks so much. Thank you. Um... Next will be Alan. I see a hand, Kevin, you've already spoken. Um, so I think we'll end with Alan. Can you hear me? Yes, you're on. Okay, thank you. So um, the first thing I wanna um, address is the VAERS report. The VAERS report right now has about 20,000 deaths and, and about 2 million adverse events. In Europe, uh, the VAERS analog Ultra Vigilance has 34,337 deaths, 3.1 million adverse events. In both instances, um, they, these reporting systems are known to report capture only around 10% or so of adverse uh, events. There's some debate on that figure, the 10% figure, but there is no debate at all in the scientific community that VAERS and Ultra Vigilance both underrepresent the actual number of reported events, okay? Um, now, as far as following the science, I think we would be wiser to follow the money. Okay. Really, um, when we're talking about biologics, they're not vaccines. They are um, experimental biologics. We're talking about companies that have invested literally billions in their share um, on logics and getting them out to the public and specifically, which is the biggest one. Moderna had nine attempts before and failed all nine attempts because they didn't pass the animal trials. The EUA allowed them to pass the animal trials this time. So we should be talking about um, whatsoever. Pfizer has been indicted and convicted, convicted 71 different felonies, admitted to these 71 different felonies, paid out what was the largest fine in, in medical history at the time because of falsifying data. They're also involved in falsifying trial data, bribing doctors, scientists, and um, so on and so forth. We could talk all night about that. But the important thing to understand is that the first three months of Pfizer's trial data for these injections is out. You can go see it. 
and they falsify um, that data as well. Okay, just one one last word. Thanks, I appreciate your time. Thank you so and much. That data should not be um, uh, misunderstood. These shots should never be out in the public. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, is there anyone else who would like to speak who has not spoken? Please raise your electronic hand. Kevin, you have already spoken. I do not see any other hands up. Um, thank you all for your comments. We really, really are interested uh, to know your thoughts. Um, there's a lot to digest here. And um, yeah, um, Casey, I believe you spoke already as well. Um, so I th think that we'll call that the end of the public comment session. Uh, there's a lot for us to, to take in. Um, I just want to say that some people thought this was uh, a decision that was already made. This is not a decision that has been made by any means. Um, and um, we will continue to think about it. I think uh, we've spent three hours doing public comment. I would like to take a five minute break. It's 837. Um, we can come back at Oh, what's five minutes? 8.42, please. Um, we'll just take a pause. All right, is everybody back? I see Cynthia, Lawrence, Suzanne, are you back? Meredith, are you there? Uh, Cynthia, do you see Suzanne? Oh, Chris, there, Chris Parrish. I'm looking. Unmute. There you go. I'm here. Okay. Oh, she's here. And Meredith, are you here? I'm here. Okay. Um, well, um, would, uh, we need to open the, the board of health meeting first. Right. Would someone first. like, like to make a motion? Um, I move. go ahead. Cynthia. I move to open the meeting. Second. second. All in favor, Cynthia. Yes. Laurent. Oh, are you muted? You are muted. Sorry. Laurent. Yes. Uh, Suzanne? Yes. Joanne? Yes. Okay. Northampton Board of Health meeting is now open. Uh, this meeting is being recorded. Uh, it's December 28th. It is 8.44 p.m. Um, Meredith, how do you want to proceed? Um, sure. So first off, I'd like to thank everyone for taking the time coming tonight and offering up their respectful, mostly respectful um, public comment, regardless of what side you land on. My, I've been the health director for 10 years now, and I have to tell you, um, I've been with most of the board for all of those 10 years, and they really do take into consideration all of the public comment. 
Um, Joanne, at this time, I think because we're three hours into public comment and we also have about 100 plus written testimonies that have come in in the last 48 hours, which I'd like to give you an opportunity, you and all the other board members, an opportunity to look at. Um, I think it might be wise to continue our Board of Health meeting um, until next week. So you guys all have the opportunity to really digest what was said tonight and, and think about um, you know, unintended consequences of such a, a policy. I, I think it would be, um, it, it wouldn't be right for us to proceed in any way without even seeing the comments and the perspectives that have already been submitted. And, and I saw them coming up with forwarded emails as, as the public comment was going on. So there's simply been no opportunity to, to look at those and review those. And I would not want to do anything without um, digesting the comments that have been provided by the citizens and others who are concerned about these issues. We do have a couple of other agenda items. Um, can I can I just ask yes, a procedural mm -hmm. question? Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I would agree with that. Um, at the same time, I hope we can come up with a because of the interest of time and the spread of the virus, I hope we can come up with a meeting date. I know we have one scheduled for a couple of weeks, but I also really need to hear um, what would happen because we're a board of four if we have a tied vote on any issue, not just this issue. I just need to hear what that outcome is, if anybody knows. Attorney Ewald is, Al is on mm -hmm. the Zoom call, so if we can just unmute him. He can answer that. Thank you. Alan, the motion, uh, good evening all. Uh, the, the effect of a 2-2 two -two tie is that the motion that's on the table fails. Thank you. How uh, do members wanna proceed? We have a couple of other agenda items uh, that we might want to take care of before we um, uh, table this issue to uh, another day. I, I was wondering if it would be possible to have Amy, uh, who provided one of the public comment, come back for questions and, and answers since she represents the Downtown Business Association. Uh, having a longer conversation with her uh, would certainly help me. When do you want to do that? on the next meeting. Okay. Um. Of, of the, I, it seems to me that on the agenda, the vaccine mandate proposal was the third item of new business. And the other two were, um, uh, consideration of uh, once again have it, declaring an emergency and allowing to Meredith to make, make decisions based on that. And then um, a revision of the definition of vaccination for the senior center. It seems to me that we could um, discuss each one of those. And I would like to hear from Meredith uh, about the declaration of the emergency and the need for that and her perspective. We've done that once before. Then we um, ended the emergency when it was thought there wasn't necessary any, any longer. And I assume that there's now some impetus to reinstate that. But I'd like to hear from Meredith about that. Sure, I think the thought behind it was because COVID is um, moving so fast and we're having to pivot um, on the dime that having to um, be behold to open meeting law and post a meeting, we'll find a date that first works for everyone, post a meeting 48 hours before and having the meeting that if a decision had to be made quickly um, to give me the authority to do so again. So that's what was 
behind putting that on the agenda tonight. Um, you know, uh, I we did that um, March or late March, early April of 2020. And um, any time that I enacted or used that authority, I had to notify the board within 24 hours of any policy that was set. And then if you didn't agree, you had the opportunity to have a board of health meeting. Um, so I'm happy to take on that onus and that responsibility again, um, if, if need were to arise that I have to use it. Um, but just because of how fast numbers, um, cases are spiking and just not knowing, you know, uh, what's gonna happen day to day, it might be good giving that authority back to me. And just to clarify, Meredith, um, mm -hmm. when you had that emergent, for, for those who are still on the, uh, attending this meeting and have uh, concerns about transparency, um, as I recall, you did not act on things like the um, vaccine requirement for restaurants and bars or anything of that magnitude when you had the emergency um, powers, did you or did you not? No, no. nothing vaccine related, no. Mm -hmm. No, when we, were, when we were discussing the uh, mask mandate, that, that was discussed at board meetings. You did not take that on yourself, as I recall. I, I cannot remember that. <laughs> well, the, the mask mandate that's in place now was a, definitely a board decision. Yes, that was, yeah. Mm -hmm. Right, right. And I so, don't know if the original one was. Mm -hmm. Right. So the, the, the primary issue of concern that was discussed in public comment, I, I think, would, would be something that would have to be dealt with at a board meeting if there was to be a decision made yes. or something like mm -hmm. that. Just, mm -hmm. I just want everyone to understand that giving you emergency authorization does not uh, mean that we are asking you to make a decision on a vaccine mandate. No, I wouldn't want that responsibility. Uh, okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Suzanne, for clarifying that. <clears throat> and and an, mm -hmm. another ahead. option is that we commit to meeting on a more regular basis um, through, uh, through the spring because we know what's coming. So I just wanna put out all the options on the table. I, I would agree with this. I would rather have a weekly meeting for the next couple of months than provide emergency power at this time, particularly after hearing 77 comments, some of which would seem to be wanting more transparency and spinning con conspiracy theories. And I think more than ever, we need to be transparent and not give the opportunity for those people to, um, to argue that we're not being transparent about this. So I would not support those emergency powers at this time, unless you can give me specific examples where really um, not, us not responding within a matter of days would have some serious impact on health and the well-being of people. And if we can't come up with concrete example now, I'm tempted to say, let's kick the can down the road and talk about it next week. If that question was directed to me, Lauren, I, I don't have specific examples and hopefully nothing comes up. Um. <laughs> it, it seems that you were able to, you were able to stop the first night, uh, you know, indoor events. Um, I, I didn't you, stop it. It was a conversation. It was a conversation. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I, I think for taking taking some of these decisions, you don't necessarily need the, the board to, to, to make them. So I'm, I'm just wondering, unless we have really a case um, where we can demonstrate that's needed, because otherwise people will die as a result. Um, I, I, I'd support that, but if, if there's no example at this time, I'm, I'm, I'm not inclined to, uh, I am not inclined to, to give those emergency powers. We do have another meeting on the books, but I can't find it. Can someone? It's uh, January, four, January 14th. I thought we had I one have sooner that right. than that. Um, let me just look again. No, we, um, we actually moved that one up. I have January 13th. Thank you. 
13th? Um, yes, that's January 13th. Yes, confirmed. So that's actually two yes. weeks. Okay. Um, <clears throat> does anyone to anyone want to make that date sooner? I'm good with that. You're good with the 13th? No, I'm good with making it sooner. Oh. Anybody else? Particularly if we're talking about bringing in Amy or bringing in individuals for additional information. All right, do you want to put out some dates? We want to do Thursday the 6th. Thursday seems to be our traditional evening. I can um, do that. This, I can do that. This, I'm fine right. with that. This being an exception. Okay. Yep, yeah, I'm good with that. Okay. Okay. January 6th at 5.30 p.m. Okay. Um, we had one other agenda item on for tonight, um, which was a um, slight uh, edit of the um, uh, regulations for the senior center uh, vaccination um, to change that from vaccine wording from vaccination to vaccination with booster. Um, um, Joanne, mm -hmm. before we go into that, do you just want me to provide you with the most current data so you have that to work sure. off of if you're Thank okay? You. Yeah. Why don't I um, share my screen? Okay. Um, can you see the graph? Yes. Yes. Okay. yes. We see the ones on the left side as well. There we go. Well, now we see two graphs. <laughs> That's fine. That's fine. You can see it's large enough. Okay. Yeah. All right, um, so as of 1228, our total cases in the city of Northampton are 2030. This doesn't include the positive cases with the at the uh, at home antigen or proctored antigen tests. Um, on 1222, you can see that we had the largest amount of uh, cases on any given single day and it was 44 cases. At our surge a year ago, our most cases on any given day was 23. This, um, unfortunately, um, I think we can all predict is gonna continue to rise because we have our holiday gatherings that just happened. We have you know, possible New Year's Eve gatherings that are going to happen. Um, and we also have had a um, limited testing resources in the area. So I think as those start to ramp up too, with that combination, we'll see it continue to rise over the next uh, four weeks. Uh, the second slide is just showing our current trends. Um, you can see that our total case count and our incident rate has tripled since November 1st. So November 1st, our total case count between a two week period was 76 cases and the incident rate cases per day per 100,000 was 19. And then currently from December 13th to the 20, uh, December 13th to the 26th, our total case count in that two week period is 240 with our incident rate at 59 cases per day per 100,000. So it's actually doubled again in the last two weeks. The next slide that Vivian provided us is just uh, demographics. It's age distribution of cases. Nothing shocking there. Then we have our positivity rate at Cooley Dickinson Hospital. And you can see right now that the positivity rate is just at 10%. That's where it was at a year ago when we were in our peak of our last surge. Um, the state's positivity rate right now, as of today, is 11 point, 
I don't think that I have any, 11.04, I believe is the positivity rate today. Um, other hospitalization and death data, um, Cooley Dickinson Hospital, you can tell, and Joanne, you might wanna to speak to this. We have currently, as of today, 18 COVID positive inpatients. Um, and if we look at that data set, that's pretty significant, comparatively speaking. The Bay State Health, uh, Bay State Medical Health Center hospitals, they too um, are really inundated with COVID cases. The flagship hospital, Bay State Medical Center in Springfield, is licensed for 988 beds. On December 17th, they reported that they have uh, 1,095 patients. So they're way over capacity. Um, the CEO of Bay State said that the problem was not so much of the influx of patients, but rather that the people in the hospital with COVID-19 tend to stay in the hospital for much longer than patients, uh, for much longer than other patients. He also said that the length of stay, as well as the complexity of dealing with COVID-19 precautions and testing, makes it more difficult to manage the surge of patients and having fewer staff. I just want to add one thing about, um, I'm sure Bay State is similar, but at Cooley where I work, um, it is not business as usual. They have um, canceled elective surgeries in order to free up uh, beds and staff to go to other places. Um, and they're also um, have cut down the number of outpatient procedures, even though those patients would not use a bed um, we are using those staff in other locations. So it is not business as usual at all. Uh, the maximum number of patients at any one time that we have had were a tiny hospital uh, was 21. And <clears throat> uh, today we are up to 18 and I certainly expect we're gonna pass, um, surpass our 21 uh, mm. before this wave is over. So this is really, um, people are really stressed and tired. Mm -hmm. This is really difficult. Two of Bay State's um, community hospitals, I think it's uh, Wing and Noble, are also beyond capacity. Normally, they um, have 100 beds, and now they're, uh, excuse me, 80, and now they're at 100. So um, out in the western part of the state, we are really beyond capacity in terms of uh, hospital capacity. And, you know, um, that's kind of one of the data sets that we've been watching very closely are how are how are our hospital, hospitals doing and what do we need to do as a board of health to prevent them from going you know, into surge capacity um, and having lack of resources. So this, and then the next slide is just kind of an overview. This came from the state, talks about cases um, and it has two reporting weeks and then it has the number of cases, the percentage of people who tested positive that were fully vaccinated. So I think that number um, is really important that it's, it's extremely low on the case rate, on the hospitalizations and on the death rate. And then lastly is just our vaccination um, data. And again, this is just for Northampton. 78% of our total population is vaccinated, 80% um, of eligible, five years and older. Partially vaccinated per capita is 12%. And then it has a breakdown um, of demographics. And you can see that fully vaccinated is the gray. It might be a little small to see that in the graph. Partially vaccinated is the orange. And then individuals with boosters are the yellow. I find a stone in there. So that's just the data report. Thank you. Yep. Thanks to Vivian too. Yeah, it really concerns me the Cooley Dickinson situation because um, my understanding is, and I just need to say this directly, if if you if you need to go to the ED there you need to expect a several hour wait, many, many hours for something as simple as a, well, not simple, but a fall on the ice because of what's happening um, upstairs. Um, so it's just, um, I, I do look at that as our responsibility as well to, to keep looking at those numbers because if we can't treat, 
people in our community were, were we really have a problem. And people who need admission to the hospital are often uh, sort of boarding in the emergency room for hours or days before they can get a room. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Meredith. Um, so do you wanna take up the subject of um, the senior center? Anybody? I just don't know if we resolve the emergency declaration issue. We talked about having another meeting, but I don't know if anything else needs to be said there. I just wanted to close if, that loop. Um, well, if no one wants to make a motion, then it's then we don't have a motion on the table. Does anyone want to make a motion? Are we comfortable waiting another week? I am. As, a, as opposed to giving emergency declaration powers to Meredith, is that the? To, 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 as opposed to giving them to her tonight. Yep. Um, wait till next week to revisit that. She didn't, I, I know things can change overnight, but she didn't seem to have, I'm, I'm talking about you like you're not on the call, Meredith, um, <laughs> um, that you didn't seem to have anything that was driving this um, decision immediately. Correct, Suzanne. Um, I today's Wednesday is today Tuesday. Today is Tuesday, not Tuesday. Wednesday. And I think if we're scheduling the meeting um, nine days out, that might be a bit much. I think a lot could change. Um, I'm wondering if the board members would be available to meet on the third. Yes, I'm available. Uh, Monday, Monday the third. Yes. Um, I'm available. Um, uh, it it might be hard for me to start at five thirty, but no, actually, Monday the third will be fine. Lauren. Monday the 3rd is, is fine for me. Okay, so not the 6th. We're meeting on January 3rd, Monday, January 3rd at 5.30. Yeah, that would just make me more comfortable in case any actionable items had to happen. Okay. And then we need the agenda out by Thursday <laughs> this, of this week, which is in another 48 hours. Or, so, um, if, if we wanted to query Amy or, um, uh, or anyone else, I don't know. Mm -hmm. We need to get them on. So I'd like to actually ask the board and Amy if it's okay if we, Amy and I start having a discussion beforehand, because I think a lot of the questions that she emailed, I yeah. can answer without the board, and then we can narrow it down to use our time more wisely at the Board of Health meeting. Sure. Sounds great. Okay. So as of now, I think the agenda would be the same as it is today, correct? Unless we vote on the- uh, Senior center. On the senior center. Okay, so we're gonna um, <clears throat> skip the, um, there's been no um, motion about emergency powers. Um, so we'll move on to the senior center. Um, and I think we've all agreed uh, about the um, vaccine regulation for businesses that, that that is gonna be tabled until our next meeting so that we can read all the testimony and um, give it further thought. Um, so does anyone uh, want to discuss the senior center, um, modifying the senior center regulation? So, uh, so as I understand it, we are changing the definition of fully vaccinated in turn um, as applied to the senior center requiring a booster. Is that pretty much the essence? That's uh, a proposal. Yep. Any discussion? I have a question for Attorney Seawall. Um, Alan, are you available? I can't find him. 
Alan, can you turn on your video so I can find you? Bless your heart. Bless your heart. There you are. Um, th this question arose uh, last meeting, and I, I, I'm hoping you can answer it because it has to do with signing documents for policies that have been voted on by the board. If a member votes against the policy, does that board does that board member also sign the policy document? That's a board policy. Um, you know, the it's not necessary. You need it. Um, the board can assign that task to the to the chair. Uh, the board can leave in place the policy of uh, having at least a majority sign. Um, obviously, you can't force the dissenting vote to sign, and uh, that certainly couldn't prevent the uh, policy from going into effect or else that would be minority veto. And so um, whatever the policy of the board is, is the policy of the board. There's no, there's no fixed requirement in that regard. But if you're going to have the chair sign on behalf of the board, there ought to be a vote authorizing that in generally authorizing that if that's going to be your policy. Otherwise, a majority of the board should sign. So if the if if a board member voted against it, it doesn't matter if that board member signs or doesn't sign, as long as there's a majority of the. Of That's the correct, board. and okay. it certainly doesn't preclude that board member from signing. Okay. Um, but that's again board, board policy. Um, Thank you. Any um, other discussion about the senior center? Uh, just so the just the rationale. I mean, I, Meredith, if you could um, lay that out for us. So sure. Um, when we created the policy a few two three weeks back, um, we kind of toyed with the definition of what fully vaccinated means, and we used the CDC definition at that time, meaning the two mRNA series or the one um, J and J. But we talked just a bit about knowing very well that, um, well, what early evidence was starting to suggest is that uh, both Delta and Omicron require the vaccine dose to really be protected, that it's in increasing your immunity. And we were kind of hoping that the CDC would be changing their definition soon, um, but they haven't yet. And so I think because we, um, know that vaccines are our most powerful and effective tool in our arsenal and know that what this evidence is showing us that it's our duty to change that definition in the policy that we created because the, the mRNA series of two doses, especially for our high risk population, isn't cutting it. Um, our small, small little data sets that we have are showing that um, there is spread amongst the vaccinated um, and and I've, I've witnessed it happen in congregate setting. It's just going through like wildfire with people who are vaccinated and don't have the booster vaccine. So I would hate for, you know, our high risk population, um, the, you know, the people using the senior center, giving, having them have this sense of security because of this requirement, but that's not really there. So I feel like if we're going to have this, have the policy, then we should um, really consider changing the definition of fully vaccinated to include the booster. Other comments or questions? So just a little semantics, I think fully vaccinated at this time means having the two mRNAs or one Janssen. So whether we would call it a new definition of fully vaccinated or we'd call it vaccinated and boosted. I mean, I think that might be more clear, um, but I do think that that um, would offer more protection and not just the feeling of protection, but true protection. Um, apparently uh, the booster um, changes the protection for symptomatic disease from something around 35%, which is not great, to about 70%. Mm -hmm. Not perfect, uh, but definitely an improvement um, in protecting from symptomatic disease. Um, people without the booster, I think, are still 
uh, we believe are still fairly well protected against a severe disease or death. Um, but the booster definitely can help um, decrease transmission and symptomatic disease. And um, we, uh, we take this one piece of science um, at a time that the booster, we don't know yet how long it is going to be effective. We don't. That's true. Mm -hmm. Tony Fauci believes that um, we're not going to need multiple, multiple doses to keep us safe, even though we know our vaccines don't work as well against transmission and mild disease as we would like. Um, but we really don't know at this point. I think there's a lot of debate about what's going on in Israel with the fourth dose. Um, and it's really not clear that that's the way to go. And um, I, I know we notified the senior center of this possibility, and I was wondering how their logistical implementation is going for the, I think it's the January 17th? Um, January 17th. Yeah, January 17th is the effective date of the policy that was passed a, a couple of weeks ago. Um, I've also been in communication with the, um, the director of the senior center and talked about um, limiting or actually eliminating um, all high risk activities within the senior center right now, just, you know, pausing it, high risk activities. And she was um, very agreeable to that and was thinking the same on the same line. So we talked about what those activities are. And if we change the, uh, if we ask for everyone to be boosted rather than just uh, quote, fully vaccinated, would she need a different timeline? Have you asked her about that? I haven't. Do, do we know what her procedure is for checking? Um, she's, okay. No. <clears throat> Last I heard, she um, they were soliciting for volunteers and then people who wanted to work for the city's tax write-off program to, right. do, um, to check vaccination status upon entry. Since we are meeting again in a very short uh, short time, uh, do we want to get some input from Marie about, um, I think we had asked for this last time, just some input from her about if we were to change it to requiring a booster, how that would affect her operations and whether she'd need more time and, and, and all that. Do we want to get some input from her and uh, table this? Sure. Anybody else? Um, I'd support getting Marie's opinion as well as giving the opportunity for um, for public comment on this matter. Since it's got it was overshadowed by our um, other um, other our mandate proposal. So and we'll be able to um, vote on this before the date of the implementation anyway, correct? Yeah. So my thought about the next meeting is we won't have public comment because we listened to it tonight. Otherwise, I can imagine we would be doing another three to four hours of public comment before the meeting. Alan, is that, uh, is that kosher? That's, that's fine. Most uh, boards uh, special meetings don't include uh, public comment for the very reason that they usually focused on something that couldn't be gotten to at the, the regularly scheduled meeting. So that's not uncommon. Thank you. But having heard that, I'm ready to make a motion, but. Any other discussion? Cynthia? Uh, I'd like to move that we include uh, the booster vaccination as part of the senior center uh, requirement uh, period. Yeah. You move to make the change. Is, is that what I understand you saying, Cynthia? <laughs> Thanks for prompting me, uh, Suzanne. Um, yeah, did I word it improperly? <laughs> no, I wasn't. I wanted to make sure I understood what you were saying. Yes, yes. Okay. You didn't want to wait. You don't want to wait for input from Marie. Um, I, I, 
just don't know what the added value would be because we really have gotten over a pretty large hump already um, in that discussion and, and participation with the director. So I, but just a motion, don't have to approve it. Discussion? I, I second. Any other discussion? I, I, it seems to me, unless I'm missing something, that this is just a, a bookkeeping issue. This is just what what are they not okay, what are they checking at the door? It doesn't change the process in any in any way. Are they checking two shots or are they checking three? Um, I, that's that's the only the only change. So it's not a major change to everything that's already been discussed. I guess I would like to hear from Marie that they were getting that information the first time around that they don't have to go back like they need more time to go back. I'm, I think she knew this was coming and hopefully got that information as she was getting that information and whether the implementation date would be the same. I guess I'm, I'm sort of interested in her input. And I, you know, we're meeting in less than a week. Well, Joanne, I don't think she's yep. been collecting that information because it's not, the policy is not effective until the 17th of January. She's not started collecting that information? I, I don't think so. Oh, okay. All right, any other discussion? There's a motion on the table. Uh, Cynthia, do you want to repeat your motion? I'll try. <laughs> um, I would, I'm, I'm move, I still move to include the booster vaccination in the, in the current senior center um, policy that we have all approved. Okay. Um, Second. Second. Great. Um, all in favor, Lauren? I'm going to abstain. Um, Cynthia? Yes. Suzanne? Yes. Joanne? Yes. So that passes. Okay. Um, I think that is uh, covers our agenda for tonight. Does anybody have anything else they would want to put on our next agenda or any other business? Uh, Meredith, do you have any department updates? No, not that I can think of this time. <laughs> Just a, a quick question about testing, though, because I think testing really plays into um, further discussion. I know, uh, Meredith, we had to delay testing, mm -hmm. um, the drive-through testing sites. And I think it's going to start on the 3rd. Is that, it is, is, yeah. is that firm now? So it'll be Mondays and Fridays? So, yeah, it was um, the company that we are partnering with, Curative, um, notified us about, uh, I don't know, a half a week ago that there was a possibility that they weren't going to be able to start uh, this Monday on the 27th because they're having staffing issues themselves. So um, I've reached back out to them asking for confirmation for the third and they haven't um, said anything otherwise. So we're hoping that starting Monday, January 3rd, we'll have a drive through and a walk up testing site in the Roundhouse Plaza. Mondays, it'll be 8.30 to noon. On Fridays, it'll be 12 to 4. And that is for the PCR testing. Um, I think the last meeting also, I mentioned to you that we got 4,950 um, antigen, rapid antigen tests. And we've distributed almost all of them, thankful to our community partners, like the Survival Center, um, um, Lee Anderson over at Mana Kitchen, First Church. Um, everyone has been super in, in getting these kits and distributing them to the underserved populations or those people who have issues with um, accessing testing due to transportation. Um, people have reached out to us over the phone um, and have come to the health department to pick up because we did leave a few here. 
Um, so it was a wonderful gift from the state. I wish there was more coming, but there aren't any more coming to those 102 communities that were blessed with this gift. Um, so we're actually, um, I've talked to the mayor's office about possibly using FEMA money or ARPA money to purchase. Some of these um, antigen tests because they're a great public health strategy they're a great tool to have um i think you know in addition to all of the other public health strategies that we've been talking about for two years now um this will be really useful so the state i know is in the process of uh, procurement process of locking in a vendor because right now um they're price gouging on those kits, you can find them anywhere from, you know, $15 to $35 on the internet or in the drugstores. And so if the state has a contract with the company, we'll be able to buy them at a locked in rate through a state contract. So hopefully we can get our hands on more and, and be able to get them out to the public. I, I would love the restaurant workers to have them, you know, just there's so many places that they could be extremely useful. Great. Uh, any other parting comments? Would someone like to make a motion? Move to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. Any discussion? All in favor? Suzanne? Yes. Cynthia? Uh, yes. Thank you, Joan. Lauren? Yes. Joanne, yes. The Northampton Board of Health meeting is now completed. Thank you all so much for your time and your comments. We really do appreciate hearing from the public. And um, the board will meet again on Monday, January 3rd at 5.30 p.m. There will be no public comment, but it is a public open meeting. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>